Okay, good morning. It's uh, Thursday, November 16th at uh, 9.20. Again, I uh, apologize for a bit of the tardiness. Uh, we were scheduled to start our open session at 9, and we'll share with you what happened between then and now. Uh, all good stuff. But as we uh, always do, why don't we uh, stand um, for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, <clears throat> as shared, we're uh, starting a little bit later. We had uh, the opportunity and honor to uh, host Secretary Anderson, who's uh, Secretary of Commerce here in Maryland, and uh, he spent about an hour and a half with us uh, with some very candid dialogue going back and forth. And uh, so I appreciate his time, and now he's got the opportunity to uh, visit some of the highlights here in Carroll County uh, with our economic development team. So uh, that's why we're running a little bit behind. But as always, let's uh, start with uh, some priority, Carroll, what's on our minds, and then we'll get right into the agenda. Commissioner Vigliotti. Well, good morning, Commissioner Rossi, and thank you very much for that. Uh, so the autumn is rapidly coming to an end, and we've been no less busy in our endeavors, whether it's here in governance or being involved in our county community among our fellow citizens. I'm, I know there's a lot going on today, so I'm only going to touch on a couple of things. Uh, so first, recently I had the privilege of attending the 19th annual dinner for the Marriage and Relationship Education Center, or MREC, at Uniontown Bible Church just outside of Union Bridge. Um, MREC is an organization devoted to strengthening marriages and families through faith and education, programs and events, counseling classes and more. It's a wonderful organization with people devoted to an incredibly important mission and given the state of marriage uh, at, in our present society and culture, it's absolutely timeless and timely. Uh, if you're looking to strengthen your marriage or your family, I would very much suggest checking out MREC to see what you might find. Uh, second, uh, this past Friday, I had the privilege of attending the monthly Tawny Town Business Breakfast, where I had the pleasure of introducing Gina Valentine to speak about veteran services in Carroll County. It's always interesting to hear Gina and others in our county department speak about the service that are provided to our veterans, especially given that not everybody truly knows the scope and the extent of the services that we do provide. And so I do wonder whether there's uh, a way that we as a county or as a government might be able to create some kind of of, of board or group uh, that could collect information about all of these services under one umbrella. I know that you know, the county officers offers certain services, uh, certain private groups offer other services, and what I find more often than not is somebody will know about something that somebody provides but not other groups. And so if there's a way that we might be able to create some kind of uh, Veterans Alliance network or something to, to help collate all that information that, that might be beneficial. Saturday, I had the privilege of attending the Veterans Day observance at the Hessen Snyder American Legion Post in Tawnytown, uh, which was conducted by Post Commander Kate Irwin. It was an incredible ceremony, and I was honored to be able to speak during the proceedings. And one of the things that stood out to me about that morning was how full the place was. I've been to a number of Veterans Day ceremonies around the county over the years, and within the last couple of years especially, it seems like the number of people uh, both veterans and, and citizens who were attending them seemed to be on the decline. Uh, but I was incredibly enheartened this weekend to see that this room was really packed. And I certainly hope uh, that that is a continuing trend. Uh, this week, I had the pleasure of attending a meeting with the community board of, I'm sorry, the community college board of trustees along with my fellow commissioners to be updated on how things are going at the college. Of continuing concern to all of us, including the college's blueprint, and the board of trustees reaffirmed to us that they are in this with us and that we're all together in figuring out how to handle blueprints. 
And I want to compliment President Ball and the Board of Trustees not only for their dedication to the college, uh, but for their communication and their wonderful working relationship with the Board of Commissioners. I've been told by many of our citizens now, nearly a year of this current board being in office, how grateful they are to see the relationships that we are renewing and strengthening because at the end of the day, it's our citizens who benefit from the work and the relationships that we have together. Yesterday I had the pleasure of attending the Farm Museum Advisory Board monthly meeting and this too is an incredible group of people dedicated to preserving our farming heritage and our history for our county. And as I've said before, this is a poignant and critical complement to our agricultural preservation program. Uh, the advisory board is preparing for the next year in which the number of events that they're hosting are going to increase, giving citizens even more opportunities to enjoy our county. Of particular note, this coming Saturday, November 18th, from 10 o'clock a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m., the Farm Museum will be holding the grand opening of their Stitching History exhibit, featuring quilts from throughout the history of the county. The museum tends to over 90 unique quilts, of which 15 will be on display and then rotated through every six months. And I know myself and Commissioner Gordon at least are going to be attending that. I also had the pleasure of reading a proclamation for Diabetes Awareness Month at Carroll Hospital Center yesterday as well. A number of incredible exhibitors were set up in the lobby ready to provide people with information on everything from diabetes itself to prevention techniques, information on how to handle and prevent diabetes, and information on health insurance and coverage. Uh, last but not least, as we are in the season of Thanksgiving, I think it's appropriate to reflect on the last few weeks as a matter not only of gratitude, but recognition as well that we live in a safe, stable country and that stability and security must constantly be renewed. And so I am humbled and grateful for our veterans, the men and women who put on uniforms to protect us. And I'm humbled and grateful to serve on this board alongside Commissioners Rothstein, Kyler, and Guerin, who as veterans have done so. You know, we really cannot take for granted what we have. The terrorist attacks of September 11th are not that far in the past, and the brutal terrorist attacks against Israel remind us that evil does still exist in this world. And so I again offer my prayers and steadfast support to our friends and allies in Israel and my prayers and gratitude for our veterans, such as those who sit beside me. And that's all I have this morning, Commissioner. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Kyler. Thank you. I'm going to run through it kind of quick since we're, we're already moving a little late. You get Veterans Weekend, uh, Veterans Week, great. Um, I did get to go to a number of events that day and ended up at Manchester Valley High School where they did a dinner and a program, had a great turnout. Um, my, my guess is uh, 100, 120 people maybe. Um, and they did dinner and afterwards, every veteran was invited to attend their class musical for free, their school musical. So that, that, that was awesome to see so many people. And, and as you said, it's, it's just so great to see the different generations. The, uh, <clears throat> the, the band played some music selections during the thing, and I thought their selections were so great, they ended up with, uh, I don't know what you call it, like a composite of a couple of everybody's, every service's song. And they asked every service to stand as their song was played. I just thought that was awesome for a group of kids to decide to do. It, it, it was great. And then uh, Faith Day sang the national anthem, uh, mm -hmm. and she's always good. It, it was, uh, the, the students just did a great job. Um, I do want to mention and thank Citizen Service, the Department of Aging, and the senior centers. We did meet with the uh, group for the pool room at North Carroll Senior and uh, a compromise was reached. They're not thrilled with it probably, but uh, they need to reach out and meet with, with management and hopefully behave while they're in the pool room and have this move forward. Um, like most groups, probably 90 plus percent are great people that just wanna come play pool. Um, as you, if you follow it on social media, there's also a group of idiots that probably don't deserve to play pool there. And uh, it, it's a shame. And, and it's a shame that, that a small group can ruin stuff for a big group, but that's, that's who did it. Um, Carroll Community College, we had the breakfast. I had the, uh, the, I was lucky enough to be part of the trustees meeting. It was great. 
uh, Commissioner Gordon and I toured Lehigh, and and that's a a, a great great company. And I and I'll, I'll try to keep being brief. I'm not doing very well at it. Um, the one thing that amazes me about that that I think a lot of people don't know, they're part of a big big entity. They're probably one of the best and largest of that entire entity, and. You know, we forget some of the stuff that goes on in Carroll County. That that they're, I mean, they're known nationwide, and and it's it's awesome. Um, we did get to talk with the Secretary of Commerce this morning. That was great. Saturday, while I mixed in three other veterans events, I also attended the uh, past students of Robert Moton, and that's a great group. And we met for about an hour and great discussion. And they have some great plans. Um, tomorrow night I'm hopefully going to the Hampstead tree lighting in, in Hampstead and then on a personal note um, my granddaughter Sophie it's her birthday today and <laughs> and I'm saying this so I remember uh, my wife's birthday is tomorrow thank you <laughs> <laughs> not bad <laughs> And Carroll County is great as well, right? Oh, and I love Carroll County. <laughs> I, I love my grandchildren, I love my wife, and I love Carroll <laughs> okay, County. Okay, just, you know, yeah, that, make sure Commissioner Gordon. Thank you. Good morning. Well, I'm glad we got that on the record there, Commissioner Kyler, so we're good. <laughs> um, obviously, we had a number of uh, veterans events this past week. Um, myself and Commissioner Rothstein were at the uh the uh, we honor veterans breakfast held by bridging life um it was a wonderful testament to see all the various uh, veterans that turned out i know over the past couple years with uh, uh various things with COVID, it was very difficult to have these kind of in-person events but it was it was just great and uh very uplifting to see everyone and be able to talk to uh men and women that have served in the service and just uh get to know them better and understand some of all their different uh scenarios and situations there definitely was some conversation in the room about what we can do better collaboratively as a community to help with uh, some of the needs of our veterans which we do a good job but we can always improve on those things so very appreciative uh, for everybody that turned out that morning um, what do we have there Chris I can't see it I know he's got a flyer but I can't yeah, what was the next uh hey, Chris slide Chris that flyer State winter market at Carroll Community College thank you um, as uh, my fellow commissioners mentioned we were at the uh, Community College earlier this week and they have an upcoming uh, winter market on Saturday Saturday December 9th a uh, number of local businesses definitely something to uh, check out in the community and participate in as well uh, as Commissioner Kyler mentioned we were out at uh, Lehigh or Heidelberg uh, yesterday uh, which was uh, quite the experience to uh, witness that firsthand. Uh, they produce 2.5 million tons of cement a year. And if I remember correctly, I think they said that's about, what, 1% of what's produced, I think, worldwide, if I remember. So that was impressive to see that operation and all the technology and, you know, I won't say it's a completely hidden gem given the size of it, but I don't think a lot of people <laughs> understand what actually is in our community at times, and it's great to see those kind of businesses showcased. Uh, last, e uh, last night I was uh, in attendance with the uh, Historical Society of Carroll County and their, their board meeting, and uh, as my other commissioners have mentioned, we were at the meeting this morning with the uh, Secretary of Commerce. Um, I know we're not going to be here next Thursday, but I did want to mention both to everyone in the room today, the community as a whole, and also definitely our staff. I want to wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. Um, obviously very appreciative of what everybody does in the community, whether you're county staff or you're a member of the community. We're all very uh, appreciative, I think, of each other, and we should be because it's a community that works together, and we've, we've done a lot of really... Uh, impressive things this year some were challenging like the uh, storm back in the summer but uh, we prevail and we get through it because that's who we are here in Carroll County and thank you very well said Commissioner Gunn good morning Carroll County I've got two things and I'm waiting to see if we have, uh, okay I'm gonna okay I'm, I'm gonna go with one thing first before that Chris thanks uh, okay yeah here we go all right so you can go with that um, I'm gonna do this <laughs> just let this sink in everybody uh the south carroll high school lady cavaliers uh won the 1a 
field hockey championship last week. So I want to wish them congrats. I just congratulations. Uh, and uh, you know, if if anybody's forgotten, South Carol won the golf state championship a couple weeks ago. So no, I'm not going to wear this thing all morning. But uh, congratulations, South Carol, my my alma mater, my high school alma mater. I've got two kids there now, and it's uh, what a great high school. And that was uh, if you can read up on the game, it was pretty dramatic too. So congratulations, ladies, on the field hockey state championship uh, so yeah South Carol's whipping up aren't they this South year? Carol is that's you know <laughs> this will be back not for football though we're not going to get into no, football no, no. So. <laughs> I was just actually gonna ask yeah no, no let's not bring that up okay no, sorry. Uh, but we're building we're rebuilding that's what a lot of the coaches tell me uh, so uh, congratulations South Carol to everybody and uh, just my second point we're, we're about two weeks off of that horrible accident again completely switching gears uh we're two weeks off from that horrible accident where four people lost their lives fortunately things like that really don't happen in carroll county very often and you'd be hard pressed to find that loss of life so as the commissioner ex officio on the emergency services advisory uh, committee i was at the meeting last night and got to hear a little bit from dr kemp and some of the other folks that responded to it major operation uh, air assets involved from shock trauma, everything from people who were driving from Frederick to work at shock trauma who rerouted to Route 26 to um, the fact that they are now providing blood uh, on the scene yep. via these helicopters uh, and they administered that with some good effect and unfortunately um, in some one case it, it was not successful. But to hear everything about what happened and all the people were involved it reminded me that you know our fire and ems and our volunteers this force we're working on it's really only a five month old concept and there's a lot of nuts and bolts that we're trying to work out and as a board we're concerned about how that moves forward and needs to be successful and we need to make sure we're supporting our volunteers and that's never going to end but for all those things, you hear about incidents like this horrible storm we had or this horrible accident, and things really did work. But uh, more so than anything, I was just really, I mean, impressed isn't the right word, but when I heard about everything that really took place to try to save lives, and unfortunately we lost four, it was just amazing. And, uh, and then you get into the aspects of how they have to treat the people who respond to those things. And you know, there's, an app, there's a part of that that happens immediately, but then there's a part of that that keeps going. And you know, don't forget next time you drive by your local fire station and you see that like 18 year old kid sitting out in front who's a volunteer, and I see that every day when I drive by Mount Airy, we've got a great uh, volunteer force there. You know, that people like that are responding to these accidents. So um, really just more of a thank you to our stations, our fire and EMS, our volunteers, everybody involved, and that particular accident was way more just difficult than I even imagined. Um, and uh, and thank you all of them for for what they do for our county um, every single day, every minute of every single day uh, of the year. So that's all for me. Thank you. No, really well said. And the uh, the seamless command and control um, from our team regionally because we also got support from Howard County. That's right, that's true. And uh, shock trauma and the, the blood on board these aircraft is a new scenario. Uh, just happened, started this last few months. I'm on the shock trauma board, and in fact I have an event Saturday, but that is having an incredible impact. Uh, and I, I appreciate you sharing that. And um, okay, uh, Chris, did you have a slide for me? I don't remember if you did. Okay, well this, um, I had a couple of Veterans Day events. This was at St. Joe's uh, over in uh, Westminster. Um, gentlemen, I'm talking to, uh, to my left is a World War II veteran. He's 95 years old. Uh, had the opportunity to speak to, I think there were kids third through eighth grade. And uh, what also was um, appreciative for me was uh, one of our own team members, Mark Ripper, is uh, a deacon over at St. Joe's. 
and there he is as well. So it was great seeing him as well on Friday. And then on Saturday, um, go to the next slide, if there is one. There you go, much better. Uh, it was a uh, Veterans Day event in um, Sykesville. And what was so special about this is I've had the opportunity to be to a lot of veterans events in my career, in my life, from Arlington uh, to lots of different places, uh, both national and international. And I'll tell you, this was probably one of the most special Veterans Day ceremonies I've ever attended. Um, those Girl Scouts were in fourth grade, and they had the role or mission to uh, bring down the colors and <laughs> fold the colors and those colors are quite large and they had a challenging time in doing this especially when they were upside down and a couple of the Girl Scouts went underneath the colors to try and figure out okay how do we twist this around uh, besides being adorable it was they weren't going to give up and uh, it just meant everything uh, watching that it's 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 it reminded me that Veterans Day is about community and um, what you see also are the white carnations on on the same picture there was 119 Sykesville citizens that served in World War One a handful of them, and it's hard to see, there were some red carnations, were wounded during World War I. The population in Sykesville at that time was 600, 119. I mean, that, that's community, and that's what Veterans Day, to me, just, it just resonated. The gatehouse uh, put on the ceremony, um, did a great job. The mayor, uh, of course, uh, shared some of her thoughts as well, but, you get the opportunity to attend these local events. Take those opportunities. Um, they just, we, we, got a, we got a great place, you know, uh, and, and the municipalities are just doing a great job. Which reminds me, uh, I know it's a little bit early, but um, Wreaths Across America is December 16th at 12 o'clock. It'll be happening across Carroll County on uh, some signature uh, cemeteries where our veterans I have been interred uh, and for the first time there is one in Sykesville the Springfield Hospital or Springfield Cemetery um, and I think there's 159 uh, that have been interred there um, but again it's an opportunity to participate uh, here in Carroll County because we have just again great great community that has served uh, not just our nation but our our own county itself. Um, let's see. A reminder: we are, uh, as Commissioner Gordon, a uh, very happy Thanksgiving on the upcoming Thursday. But we are also off on Friday. Uh, it is a, I don't know if it's a national holiday on Friday, or but we are. Uh, the county offices will be closed on Thursday and Friday. And with that said. Let's get started. Uh, we're going to skip item one right now, uh, and we're waiting on Ms. Hobbs to come in the door to talk about our uh, bond sale. But let's go right to item two, which is a request for public hearing and transfer of two lots at Sullivan and Snowden Way to the Ark of Carroll County. Morning, commissioners. Morning. Morning. It's just like just in time or something. I, <laughs> I mean, know. I, I was. I, I didn't know I was going to be impressive. present today. Okay. Uh, you done? Come on up. <coughs> uh, Tim, did you want to get us started or just go through? <laughs> no, this is a request for a public hearing. So. Okay. All right. Under the county code, there are land that is no longer needed may be transferred at no cost to a nonprofit that is authorized receive appropriations from the county. The Ark of Carroll County, established in 1955, provides support and services to over 700 children and adults in the county each year. The array of services includes residential living, employment, education, community support, and transportation. The Ark is authorized to receive county appropriations. A few months back, the Ark has expressed interest in acquiring excess land in Carroll County for a possible future client residence. 
working with county staff, two parcels on the corner of Sullivan Road and Snowfall Way were identified as excess properties. To transfer these lots to the ARC per county code, an appraisal was conducted by the ARC. These properties appraise for $50,000 each, and the ARC will be responsible for converting these parcels to buildable lots. The next step is holding a public hearing regarding the transfer. And again, I'll hold it, hand it over to staff from the ARC to talk a little more about their services. Okay, so Don, who do you have with you? Well, good good morning, commissioners. I'm um, I'm Don Rao, the executive director here at the Arc, and today I'm with uh, Corinne Corpus, our board president, who's going to uh, chat for a few minutes about um, our request, and then I'll also provide some brief comments. And be and best of luck with Winners Mill, who is in the quarterfinals. Yes, yes. So we, we do are have Carroll County representing in the state yes, for football. Yes, it's been a long time. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's been uh, a drought. I just that one. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't South Carroll. It's not Century. It's not Liberty, <laughs> but, you know, we'll, we'll take it. So, okay. That's Sorry great. That. As, as a Western Maryland College alum, we won't talk about football. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't either from, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Anyway, good morning, commissioners. Good and, morning, um, morning. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. Um, we want to discuss our vision for housing for people with dis d developmental disabilities. Our strategic plan was updated a year ago, and it focused on an initiative to evaluate each of our eight existing residential homes and determine how well they were meeting the current and the projected needs of our people. The ARC support uh, of our people. The ARC has been providing residential services to individuals since 1971, and we view this program as one of our core services. Um, Don is now going to share the results of that evaluation and uh, our request. Thank you, Corinne. So our, our team evaluated all eight of our homes. We have five here in, in Westminster and three in Tawnytown. And we were looking at um, just how they are best meeting the, the current needs of the people that live there, but then also the future needs. And we determined that six of those homes with some building renovations that we are in the process of doing would, would be able to meet the, the current and future needs. But there were two homes that just really weren't up to, to our standards. And they, they were fine 30 years ago, but as people have aged and now need to use wheelchairs in some cases, uh, you know, having uh, bathroom facilities that just aren't uh, able to accommodate their need and then um, hallways that aren't very wide to accommodate those wheelchairs we we determined that it it would be best to um, look at some alternatives and our, our board uh, when we shared this information with them determined that probably the best course of action would be to, to build to fully handicap accessible homes and we started to, to look at where we would do that we wanted to stay in Westminster because the current people that um, are, are currently living in Westminster this is where their friends are we found uh, two lots uh, the excess land uh, right on Sullivan Road which would would just it would be ideal in, in so many ways with the uh, the community pond close by. It's close to our main office and other amenities um, around um, Westminster. And you know we we really want to you know support these individuals. They um, you know they're they're feeling a bit cramped where they're living, and so the ARC would then be pursuing um, you know just the the permitting and building design uh, to have two really really nice homes um, for these folks to to move into. So just on behalf of those individuals that are living. Um, in those homes and the other people that we support, we appreciate the time to come before you and, and talk about this request for a public meeting. Okay. Um, firstly, I'm very proud of what the ARC has accomplished to date and, uh, you know, the vision of the ARC and its continuing service uh, to our community. Um, are there any questions or comments? 
I, I just had one quick question, if I could. Um, you had mentioned the two homes, I think it was two homes you said that were not up to the, that level that you were looking for care. Um, what are your plans with those those two properties? Are you looking to do any upgrades, or what are your what are your plans with those? Uh, we'll probably sell them. Okay. Yeah, to, to finance sure. the, um, the building of the two new lot, yeah, the two new homes. Okay. Yep. Any other? And the land that uh, would potentially be donated, what is going on with that right now? I mean, it's county property, but what's it? Is there anything on it or being used for anything? Or nope, they were two uh, previous stormwater management facilities um, in the Eden Farms neighborhood, and since then, uh, a, a regional facility has been built to handle all the stormwater in that area. So right now, um, county facility staff have just been maintaining the grass out there. Gotcha. gotcha. And and they're willing to take them as is. Yes. Mm -hmm. And thank you guys for what you do. This is awesome. Yes, absolutely. Okay, is there a motion to uh, get the staff to schedule an advertised public hearing? Motion to direct staff to schedule and advertise a public hearing. Second. I got a motion to second any discussion on this one. Seeing here none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. Thank you very thank you much. much. Thank Have you. a good day. Thank, thank you. you very much, commissioners. We really absolutely. Okay, I apologize. We're going to play a little bit of hopscotch on the schedule. I like uh, management and budget to come on up in moving some money around or request to, and then it's going to be followed up by public safety. And appreciate both Judge Hecker and Judge DeLeonardo being here and your patience as well. So, Ted. Okay, so this is another one of these things where. My being here is just mechanical. You've indicated your desire to move ahead with this. Doing it will mean we're going to move money from the reserve for contingencies um, to public safety, and we just will need your approval to do that. Okay. Motion to approve resolution 0-24.03 for the purchase of 14 radios and associated accessories to be used by the circuit court. Second. I got a motion, I got a second, and Mr. Zaleski, there's nothing mechanical about you. Any uh, discussion? Seeing here, none all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. Okay, now what are we going to do with this money? Ms. Valerie, you want to come on up? And yeah, I'll just let you know you have a very strong bench behind you with Judge Hecker, Judge DeLeonardo. So if, if you need their support, they're there. If you want them to come up, it's on you. We have their backs. You have their backs. <laughs> okay. I think we've had each other's yeah. backs. Good morning, morning, Commissioners. Good morning. The Office of Procurement, in cooperation with the Department of Public Safety, requests your approval to purchase 14 APX 900 um, 800 millihertz, megahertz radios one PS100 240 VAC desktop charger and 22 lithium ion batteries from Motorola Solutions Incorporated in the amount of $45,676.40. Motorola Solutions was awarded the State of Maryland 700 megahertz statewide system contract and is also a current term, con I'm sorry, current term contractor with Carroll County. So good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Um, morning. Working with the Circuit Court, uh, there's an identified need for handheld radios for the courthouse bailiff staff. Um, they're needed to improve security in and between the Circuit Court buildings. Um, it, allow, it will allow the Circuit Court bailiffs to be a little bit more uh, responsive in sa addressing safety concerns, and it's a reliable, accessible means of communication uh, with other uh, safe law enforcement and emergency personnel as well as between uh, themselves. Um, we worked with the courts to determine which device would best fit their operational needs because their operation is very specific. Uh, the model, uh, Apex 900 model, was the most appropriate uh, working with them. To, we identified that, um, and that's what we're here uh, before you to ask uh, approval to purchase. And these are not a replacement, they're in addition, correct? They are in addition. Okay. They are in addition to the, the subscribers that we have on our system. Yep. Did, did we recently approve six of these, or was that something different? For that certain? was for a grant. For a grant. To, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, for a grant to go uh, to try to um, apply for a grant and if awarded to purchase. I thought it was five. That was, for, that was for eight. 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 I thought okay. it was. Okay. <laughs> there's a need for 22, 
the eight was the grant funding request that was previously approved, and then this is the 14 that are remaining for that total of 22. How many individuals at any one time use the radios? Um, what, what justifies this number? I believe it's four, I believe it's the 14 number. There's 22. 20 can be the maximum. Yeah, 20 can be the maximum. I'm sorry. I 20 can be the maximum. That's working uh, at, at that's one working time at on one, one time. shift. Correct. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Motion to approve the purchase of 14 APX 900-7800 megahertz radios and accessories to Motorola Solutions Incorporated in the amount of $45,767.40. Second. I got a motion, I got a second in order to expedite the gentlemen back to their courthouse. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for being here. Okay, now let's go back to item three. And this is request for public hearing, bulk requirements in the commercial zones, text amendment to chapter 158 of the zoning code. Um, Good morning to you both. Good morning. Before you begin, uh, are there public comments that want to be made? If there are public comments that want to be made, um, there's those salmon cards in the back uh, you can fill out or if you have filled them out, you want to hand them to Ms. Roberta and you can make your comments and then we'll get started. The uh, first person is Audrey Novak. Come to the microphone there in the middle and state your name and address and make your comment. This happens every time. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Audrey Novak. I live at 6505 Carroll Highlands Road. Um, I just I sent an, an email to to you all, and I just wanted to reiterate that um, we appreciate so much the time and energy that has been put into this process for all going on. Uh, well, it's more than a year and a half, and we the two items that are specific um, are the height of the buildings and the, dis the setback distance. And at the Planning and Zoning Commission, they, they did agree that um, a lower height was more appropriate, the 35-foot height. But we are still concerned about the distance of 15 feet. Um, it would be much more appropriate if it could be 50 feet to um, be in keeping with the, f the character of the residential neighborhoods. Thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you. And the uh, next commenter is Nancy Lynch. Thank you. Um, we live immediately adjacent to this uh, site that started this whole thing. <laughs> and we were able to stop the uh, storage facility through uh, a legal case. But um, we just want to reiterate that the distance to our property line is as important, if not more important, than the height. And I believe they're going to talk about a sliding scale where it could potentially be back up to 50 feet tall and only 30 feet away. And we just don't think that's far enough away. Uh, I know there are parts of Code 158 where there are certain types of structures that cannot be any closer than 200 feet. So um, we just hope you take that into consideration. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. That's it. Okay. Ladies. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. I have a presentation. You're the, you're the slow speaking one, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> got it. Um, obviously, we are here to talk about the bulk requirements in the county's commercial zoning districts. Um, some history on this, if you'll remember, um, this was referred by you all to the <coughs> County Planning Commission on May 4th. Your specific direction to the County Planning Commission was to examine the bulk requirements in the commercial zoning districts when they are adjacent to a residential district. 
So going into some background of what uh, bulk requirements are, um, they are the dimensions given for a building footprint, and these can be in height and setbacks from property lines. So obviously height's pretty self-explanatory. And then the setbacks can come in a rear yard setback, a side yard setback, and a front yard setback. I'll note that even though the building footprint could extend to the setback line, they typically do not because of different development requirements, such as parking, landscaping, and stormwater management. Um, so currently in the county, our C1, C2, and C3 districts have the same bulk requirements. The side yard setback is 10 feet, the rear yard setback is 15 feet, the front yard setback is 10 feet, and the height is a maximum of 50 feet. We wanted to include the maximum heights in the residential district. As you can see in the R40, R20, and R10 districts, the maximum height is 35 feet. And then in the R75 district, the maximum height is 40 feet. Um, we also allow height modifications in the residential district, which can allow the use to exceed the maximum height of 35 feet if they increase the side yard setbacks. So for every one foot of height increase, they go above the 35 feet, um, they must increase the side yard setback by half a foot but the total building height cannot exceed the 40 feet. So this slide is to demonstrate where this um, proposed amendment will impact. The circled areas um, and the red highlighted properties are commercially zoned properties that are adjacent to a residential district. Um, so 225 of the 1,106 total commercially zoned properties in the county are actually adjacent to a residential district. So that turns out to be a little over 20% of the county's commercial properties that would be impacted by this amendment. So getting into the discussion with Planning Commission, this was first introduced to them in July and was voted out um, in October. The discussions in those months revolved around a maximum starting height, grandfathering existing buildings that would not conform to the newly proposed bulk requirements, and increasing the setbacks, allowing for an increase in height. And the recommendation that we'll get into in the um, next couple slides was unanimously favorable to you all. So specifically, Planning Commission is recommending decreasing the maximum starting height from 50 feet to 35 feet. The rationale behind this is because this is the maximum starting height in majority of the residential districts. They're recommending increasing the side yard setbacks from 10 feet to 15 feet. This would make the side yard setback consistent with the rear yard setback. And um, prior to the 2019 Comprehensive Rezoning Text Amendment, the side yard setback was 15 feet. So this would be bringing that back. They are recommending grandfathering existing buildings to prevent any non-conforming um, uses that are currently being used in, across the county. And then they are also recommending introducing a height modification that is similar to the residential districts that we have now. So they're recommending increasing each side or rear yard setback that is adjacent to the residential district by one foot would allow for a one foot in height increase. So this would not exceed 50 feet. So if we use the newly proposed 15 feet for the side yard and rear yard setback, if the developer wanted to obtain the maximum height of 50 feet, they would have to at least have a 30 foot setback from the residential district on the side or rear yard. So basically the 35 foot height maximum is not really a maximum. They could, if they increase the side or rear yard setback, they could go above the 35 feet, yeah. And this was um, thought about by the Planning Commission to provide more flexibility in design of the buildings. I. I I take that point, and I'm not trying to, to be argumentative, but it seems like, to me anyways, it defeats the purpose of having a maximum height if we automatically include a way to increase the maximum height. That's just me. I don't, I just, that strikes me as, as, as uh, incongruous, maybe. 
Yeah, they wanted to uh, be fair to all of the commercial properties that would be adjacent to the residential districts because some uses are less intense and some uses are more intense and some don't require that high of height um, compared to other uses as well. So, and, and please, you know, anybody correct me if I'm wrong. So, <coughs> I know uh, in particular the, the, the proposed business that was in um, uh, discussion about the, uh, the storage facility. They could theoretically use what is being proposed now to still build a 50 foot high building if they increased the setback. That's correct. I'm not sure what the proposed setbacks were for that plan. Um, sometimes um, the building constraints and stormwater management and parking and landscape can really inhibit it because all of that has to fit inside those setbacks. Um, and some properties are very small. We did yeah, a little yeah. research to show that the average C2, which is the medium commercial the property, most in the county, is an average of 1.3 acres. So uh, a lot of these commercial properties, especially the C2, which is the majority of them, are not terribly large. So I think that's where they wanted to build in the flexibility. Yeah, my my concern would be increasing the setbacks would, would make a lot of lots unbuildable, mm -hmm. possibly. Now, what percentage of these kind of buildings mm -hmm are conditional use as opposed because there are a lot of other setback requirements within this specifically for certain kinds of buildings but would how often would the community have the uh, the opportunity to to go to a hearing for a conditional use and sometimes those those uses the setbacks are changed as part of the conditional use. What is that a good percentage of them or not really? Um, I don't. I don't have these. We could look into it. I don't have these. Yeah, we could definitely look into it, but um, yeah, it, the conditional uses do provide more of the public process um, with the public hearing, and the BZA can put more restrictions on it. But um, as far as the site design. Um, we do have different distance requirements for different types of uses, and that's dependent on the intensity of the use. Yeah, I just, I, I think, and I understand your point, but if we increase all setbacks, we're, we're tying a lot of people's hands, a lot of landowners' hands. If, if there are different reasons to have different setbacks, the height of the building, the conditional use, the, the even possibly the allowed use I, I think that takes care of a lot of them per personally can you go back to that map yeah so some of these are within municipalities no you're talking all of this is outside this is all ours correct okay I just want to appreciate that um, I'm but my uh, thoughts is anytime you say typically you know uh, it kind of concerns me um, we should embed the parking stormwater landscaping and other variables that may you know be in the situation I mean um, because I understand when you say, well, they're not going to be able to do it because they won't meet the stormwater needs and it, they would have to push it out further. Um, I, I don't want to say we can get away or around some of this, you know, exceptions, but I think wasn't that one of the issues with uh, the storage facility was going back for a uh, conditional use regarding parking? A variance. A variance, I apologize. So, you know, we're looking for, I, I'd rather things be kind of embedded already in the rules than looking for, like I think Commissioner Kyler was moving towards was conditional uses or variances, you know. Um, I think what gets us, I want to say in trouble or takes longer is when things are not black and white and they're in that gray area and it, we go through a, a process that it'd be so much easier to say yes or no. And uh, um, 
So when, when you threw out the, the typically, you know, that subjective type of approach, that kind of, I question. Um, may, maybe I'm off the rails on this. Uh, you know, um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the residential right now can go up to 35 feet, correct? Yes. So <clears throat> what you're saying is anything that abuts next to the residential should be no higher than residential, 35 feet. That's what the Planning Commission recommended That's to you That's what the Planning Commission yeah. recommends. Um, and they could go up to the 40 feet with the height modification that we currently allow. The residential. Yeah, the residential. Sorry. So it can only go up to 40 feet. It Correct. cannot go. That's the so, maximum. So commercial cannot go above 40 feet. No. <laughs> the right now commercial is at 50 feet. So we're it, saying the maximum of commercial, regardless of any situation, will have no ability to go above 40 feet. No. Mm. No. So should well the I apologize and, and Commissioner Rothstein to your point that other slide said that uh, may not exceed a 50 foot in height it's the fourth to last slide that one yeah. so well and I think you need to clarify the question there's one height for residential there's another that we're talking about changing is heights for commercial correct and it's it's you use the residential kind of as example of what what's happening there so we'd be aware of it but mm -hmm. that's not right now we're not changing that correct and 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 the other point i want to what two points one all we're doing today is putting this to a public hearing right. i'd right. love to hear right. from the jurisdictions right. involved right. and a lot of other people before we do any changes and then secondly an, another weird question sorry okay I've got a piece of property it's whatever one and a half acres I want to build a 30 foot tall building and it's in the middle of the property so it's 50 feet from everything I want to build a 10 foot building that the dumpster would set in front of and would be storage that has to be within the setbacks also so changing this would tie my hands that I couldn't even do a small storage building everything would have to be inside the setbacks. Yes. setbacks everything yes yes not just the big building correct okay thank you sorry no 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 not at all was there a discussion uh commissioner gordon during the uh planning commission about keeping it at 40 feet or was the target always 50 feet there was some conversation um from a variety of angles regarding this the one I guess I'll say challenges there are certain types of commercial properties that they do allocate additional space above that top portion be it the roof the point of the rooftop right. and so forth so that was sort of one of the pieces that was being looked at hence the sort of option to maybe am amend or adjust that slightly okay <clears throat> I yeah if I may the so I'm glad we're I'm, I'm glad we're looking at this. We're not the first county to be doing this. There's other counties in the state that have decided they need to make adjustments for these types of facilities. Uh, that and one in particular that use case um, down in the Eldersburg area. The obviously the Planning and Zoning Commission gives us their recommendations, and we don't have to follow them. We can determine for ourselves what we think is best for the county. Um, since some of us have weighed in on with the rec specific recommendations 35 foot height seems reasonable 15 feet does not seem reasonable that's not even from me to that wall over there so that seems too close um, I'm sure I'm sure not sure we need to grandfather existing buildings and I, I would agree with some of the comments about these sort of gray areas and, and creating a, a additional processes if we're gonna come up with some uh, bulk requirements I like the idea of just making them if I can quote one of my other fellow commissioners black and white uh, because uh, I think as commissioners we are struggling with some of those those variances for lack of a better term um, in some of these uh, highly popular zoning areas so I know we've got to put this to a vote for public hearing but what I wanted to clarify was do we have the it, and we've done this a few times but I'm just drawing a blank 
do we have the ability to modify these for the public hearing or do we have to push these forward through the public hearing? These are just recommendations, so we can make changes to these now. Is that what we're discussing? Or, or we, we don't even have to. I mean, it's just. Yeah, yes, you can, you can make changes I mean, now and, and with the uh, public hearing will be advertised with those changes in them. Okay, because oh, okay. There's, there's two ways here. That we could do that or we could just push this forward and then the five of us are kind of going to make up our own mind anyway. <laughs> so I don't know what, what's best for the, for the county. It's probably to put forward what the majority of us feel is yeah. at least close to reasonable. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm certainly not a fan of, of what I'm seeing here. Um, again, I appreciate the work the Planning and Zoning Commission does. I served on it myself. We've kept them very busy. They've got a backlog of stuff we're sending them, and I'm sure we're not even done yet. We're not even a year into this new board. So, But uh, I would be proposing a greater setback, no grandfathering, and I'm just not a fan of this sliding scale. Just to me, one commissioner, one out of five, just clouds things even further. What, what happens if we don't grandfather? I mean, um, if so I have an existing building. Yeah, so the uses that would be not in conformance with whatever is adopted in the end would be non-conforming. And that could prove to be a little difficult for them when they tried to expand or, yeah, different Making things. changes. Yeah. How many of those yeah. situations do you think we're looking at or are we looking at? I mean, do we have a number of... We do not. Current projects with, that have already broken ground, and I guess that's the indication of whether. We tried to do some research, and um, it kind of proved inconclusive just because of different building designs. Because um, mm -hmm. the way we measure height in the county is from the ground to the average height. So taking it from like a Google Earth image, say, you're only taking the height from the tallest point to the bottom, and that's not how we calculate height in the county. And that's um, like a thing throughout jurisdictions. Um, it's the usable space is and height. And, you and know, a, a clarification, because um, I think we're talking two different things. You're saying grandfather existing buildings. Yeah not something that's in process now to be built existing right. building okay see that i misunderstood yeah thank yeah. you so, so it's everything it's it's and that's where i was going to go is mm -hmm. you. you know just like homes that are in that are non-conforming it's not we're kicking people out of their homes they stay in their homes and they have x amount of time once they leave their home to sell their home once that time passes then it reverts back to whatever it's zoned correct as an example Yes, they have two years it, of non-use, right? And then it re they so, lose their non-conforming status and can correct. Continue. So, similar. I won't say similar because it may not necessarily be as direct, but the existing properties that are non-conforming, they'll just be non-conforming and exist. It's not like you said, planned, architected, yeah, breaking ground. No, that's. That's off to the, that's off to the left. Okay, um, yeah, I'm, you know, kind of where Commission Garin, the more black and white we make this, and take out some of the variables, of the what ifs. Um, I'm not sure how we can get there. Uh, I do think 15 feet is, 15 feet for 35 feet height. I mean that makes, fine. I mean that's what, any place is. We have a standard height of 35 feet. I think um, going above 35 feet to 50 is pretty dramatic. Um, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe uh, saying 35 feet where it abuts next to residential and up to 50 feet if it's, you know, 100 feet from, you know, residential, you, you know what I mean? And then, or yeah, up to. So we're not doing a sliding scale, it's like this or that and. So creating kind of like an overlay. That's kind of where we're at, out. yeah. I, you know, and if it's 30 feet, 40 feet or 40 feet, then it stays at 35 feet, you know? Can, I mean, can we change this after the public hearing? Mm -hmm. We don't have to change today, right? No. 
would we have to send it back well, to? The, the notice of public hearing should give people uh, enough notice that, hey, this is going to impact my property or it's not going to impact my property. If you do something at the after the public hearing, which uh, changes the nature of, of what was advertised and impacts other people that otherwise would have come hearing. here and said, hey, I would have come to the public hearing if I didn't right. know this was going to affect my property. So, Yeah, I, I, I personally want to hear from the public. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I think the the purpose of this just let's get it out to public hearing. But as Commissioner Gardner said, it, it it's nice that people know kind of what's what we're thinking, right. and uh, and then we'll get input from the community. So well, I I mean I again I and I'm prepared to make a motion. I can compromise on some things, and then we can see what the public says. I think that's what the sentiment seems to be. But I would I'm prepared to make a motion where we. Move to direct staff to a public hearing to uh, public hearing for Bulls bulk text amendments that include a 35 height maximum and a 35 foot setback, period. And then we'll see what people say. Maybe 35 is not far enough. I prefer 50, but I understand we want to hear from the community. Uh, the grandfathering to me doesn't really seem like it needs to be in there. We're talking about existing buildings. Does that have yeah. to be in well, there? It does if you don't want them to become non-conforming uses. Okay, okay, so we, okay so we leave that in there, and then I think there seems to be a sentiment of getting rid of that sliding scale at this particular time. The public will tell us if they think that's necessary. Right, um, and I'll second that. Like I said, you know, the beginning of the discussion, it really does conf not confuse me, but it, it doesn't quite make sense that you would have uh, go through such great pains to create a maximum height and then provide uh, any number of ways to exceed the maximum height. But if 35 feet is allowed residential, right. across residential, then why are we creating further setbacks for commercial at 35 feet? And actually, 40 feet is allowed in some residential. My, my argument would, for that would be just the nature of the building itself. Uh, if there's if there's noise associated with it or lights or things of that nature. But again, I I, I prefer 50 feet. But I, I we, if we made a motion and, and went to thir you know propose 35, we'll hear from the community. We'll hear from the public. And and so I'm sorry. Please go ahead. Uh, I was uh, just going to say. So for me, it's also it's not just the, the question of the setback, but the increase. The increasing of the height that's related to the increasing of the setback. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Which of that. is right. Which is right. Yeah. And <clears throat> it's, if it's not obvious yet, I'm t totally against this. Um, what I'd like to see is a public hearing, and maybe one of the slides show some of the various uses and those setbacks. Um, I, I think, personally, we're totally overreacting to one particular site and trying to make it countywide, and. Uh, we're, we've got to decide sooner. Like, I heard people say this morning, we want in industrial and commercial. Well, evidently we don't, and that's fine too. Um, but um, we're tying a lot of people's hands with this all over one site and one building that isn't even going to happen. Uh, I think we're way overreacting. Well, I'd rather hear from the public, including some of the towns and and see how they feel about this and and see how this affects all the properties there's a lot of buildings that on this one site we're all worried about would have much greater setbacks by the code now correct depending on the type of use that was yeah. put there yeah yeah and also stormwater and other requirements oh, oh my gosh yeah. yes yeah, yeah. till you do a parking lot in the stormwater you know it's there's going to be very few buildings 15 foot from a property line. I don't even know how many there are now, yeah. but but uh, it, it's uh, I, I just think we're overreacting to it. That's so. What well, you're saying, I'm sorry. I apologize. Well, I was just going to say. So what, what you're saying? Let's just get this to a public hearing. I mean, no. Yeah, that's what no, I'm saying. No, no parameters. Yeah. Just yeah. And, and then and, you know and, we'll move forward from that and i may be in the minority but that yes that's my personal opinion okay so you're just well, wanting to go with the motion uh, not not the current motion you want to go hearing go. Okay. And, and see what everybody okay. says you want to go with and the recommended if, not the and motion if, uh, the vast majority at that point in time want a, uh, more of a setback then we'll need to do that oh we don't have to go with the recommendations from the planning commission we just have to say go to public hearing this is the information we have in front of us 
we no, want you have to you have to give the you have to give the public notice as criteria. to what the you're criteria. considering yes so it sounds like you're considering one of two different options okay. at the moment okay. the recommended from the planning commission yeah. or I, commissioner i Perry's personally motion. think we should go to public hearing with what's been recommended and commissioner Howard, if, and if i might i i totally respect and understand where you're where you're coming from um but i, I Again, I respectfully uh, disagree that, that we're making too big of an issue out of this based on one particular circumstance. I mean, it, quite often it is one uh, circumstance that, that alerts us to inadequacy or need for improvement or whatever the case might be. And uh, having heard a couple of different uh, uh, cases over the last year about you know, where a car wash might go, there are certain kinds of businesses that seem to keep popping up more and more. And I think that this particular storage facility uh, was kind of, um, I guess, a, a forerunner of others to come. And, and so I, I respectfully uh, would submit that we're not overreacting. We're simply dealing with a trend or a change in circumstances that are explain or that are, are uh, demonstrating to us that, that our, our code needs some improvement. So, again, making a motion on either, like you, like Roberta, you said, what is being recommended, or what Commissioner Guerin is uh, shared in his thoughts. Well, he made a motion. He made a motion. Let, 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 let me. Okay, I yeah. apologize. Yes. And you yeah. seconded. Right? Yes, sir. So, yep. Okay. So, what was the motion? The motion was uh, to direct staff. I move that the board direct staff to schedule a public hearing for the proposed bulk tax requirements to amendment 158 of the county zoning code specifically a 35 foot height maximum 35 foot setback in the grandfathering of existing buildings so those right. those three things and we will have an opportunity to debate those further after we get we receive comment that's my motion and, and, and I second you second it and you're staying with your second on that yep including the grandfather and I wasn't sure that way the reason I asked to restate is I don't understand the grandfathering I mean I, I, the buildings are built they but exist why do we want to he's not saying their, he's not saying remove them he said he wants to include the grandfathering you're you're including the grandfather okay okay yes. so it real yeah it d didn't need to be part of the motion go, go, gotcha it tech Oh, it does I because it will actually be in the if this were passed whatever this is yes. it, the grandfathering will be part of the ordinance so that those who yes, are so if we existing, didn't say it it would still be part of the ordinance no mm -hmm. lack of lack of direction that it's that your that your property is grandfathered in to the rules that were in place when you were built makes you automatically non-conforming so, so the board has to grandfather but they recommended yes the grandfathering to conform so do we mean I want to be yeah yeah obstinate so we need to make a motion that addresses every item they talked about or it's not in it I mean no you know it's the grandfathering doesn't need to be in the motion I if if long as we're allowing grandfathering I don't care yeah. but better. it's redundant okay just better clarity that's all. better well better to be clear than not commissioner so I, I'm with you yeah. I hear you yeah. 35 35 grandfather right those are the two things <laughs> that's got it perfect okay <laughs> i got a motion i have a second for all of this to go to public hearing so no decision is made on this except the guide uh, guidelines and guidance that we're giving to our staff and getting out to the public correct okay any other discussion on this all in favor aye, aye. No. Hold on. <laughs> oh, you you haven't voted yet. <laughs> Sorry. No. Okay. I apologize. Where were you at this? No. Okay. Two, three. Uh, that motion fails. Is there a second motion that wants to be discussed at this point? Wait. Did you say yes? You said no. No, he was a yes. I was a yep to pass the. Yeah, so it's my still. Three I apologize. So it's still two, three. No, no that's okay. okay. So you, got, you startled me for a second. Sure like, a yeah, I want to make sure I understand what's going on. So my my motion failed. Failed. Two, three. So now, is there a motion that we can move forward with to provide our staff guidance and get out to the community for public hearing regarding 
bulk requirements in the text amendment to chapter 158. Move that the board directs staff to schedule a public hearing for the proposed budget, or excuse me, bulk requirement text amendment to one, chapter 158 to the county zoning code. Second. Okay, and that's the recommendation. That's the recommended, in front of. yes. Okay. Okay, I have a motion. I have a second. Is there further discussion on this? Just so very. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sorry. I just very briefly, I'm, I'm, so I'm in support of the, uh, the public hearing and everything, but I will be continuing to press the case in the future about requirements. So I'm just putting that on the record. Sure. So, so the motion is to, to adopt these recommendations and move them to public hearing. Is that correct? Is we're, all of these? We're not adopting We're not adopting anything. I mean, we're, not we're adopt, just moving to moving public, public hearing. hearing yes. but, 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 we're, but in doing that, my understanding is that we are tying our hands with making any substantial changes to this. In our mo in our final motion, because it's going to differ that much from what the public saw. Yes, right. any substantial changes would have to be re-advertised. What's considered substantial? Fifteen feet, well, twenty it, feet. It, it's it's a hard. It's not a fast bright line, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But I would think somebody said a uh, hundred. So if you went if if what you advertise is a fifteen foot setback, and the board chooses to go a hundred, someone might be able to argue. Tim, correct me if you think I'm wrong. Might be able to argue. Oh, I would have been here for the public hearing if I had received that notice. Mm -hmm. Right. But I think, to your point, I think we've let the public know that there's there are options much less than a hundred out there. Uh, mm -hmm. Thirty five, for example, as you said, that could could possibly be on the table. So. Okay. Right, and and that would be like. For you and I to have a conversation, you know, about afterwards about distance, and we just continue to have those conversations. And, and after the public hearing, we can still vote this down, and if it's too extreme change, yes. If oh, if, yeah. if we say, if I say I want buildings 100 feet tall, that's probably an extreme change, and we, you know, we need to go back. So we're we're I don't think we're tying our hands. And it I would just, it potentially could require another public hearing. Yeah. That's yeah, really, at worst. That yep. would be the. And and I think we've uh, established that we're very mixed on how this is going to go, which is which I mm. like you say we're letting the public know that. Okay. We got a motion. We have a second to move forward to public hearing with what's rec being recommended. Any further discussion on this? Seeing here, none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? No. Nope. You're good. Okay. I apologize. I, I, I'm, I, I voted yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Gotta five vote. No. Nope. Yeah. Good deal. And again, it, it allows us to have those conversations. Again and again. Okay. And again. Phenomenal discussion this morning okay. too. I think this was a good discussion. Oh my, my okay. gosh! Yes. Yes. Yeah, one day we're going to agree. Okay. Thank you. We agree Thank you. more often oh, than we not. Do? Yeah, we, we do. do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who wants to dare come up here and talk about a change order? Uh oh. Um, thank you guys for public comment. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Construction of Merlin 851 Main Street Water and Sewer Main Improvement Project. Okay, where are we on the agenda? I'm sorry, because I know we took a couple things out of order. We're number, number six. six. Number six. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Can in the future could we get like a a bucket of numbered balls and you just draw what you want to do next? <laughs> it's like bingo. Well, this one I want to I want to take care of uh, the sheriff, uh, not the sheriff. I don't. I'm just nothing easy. against the sheriff. I'm I want to take care of the confused. judges. Sorry. So, yeah. Okay, let's Good talk morning, about a change order. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. The Office of Procurement, in cooperation with the Bureau of Utilities, requests the Board of Commissioners approval of a change order to Pessoa Construction Company, Incorporated of Fairmount Heights, Maryland, in the amount of one hundred thirty-six thousand seven hundred sixty-seven dollars and sixteen cents, to provide compensation for various unforeseen circumstances and expansion of scope related to the overall construction project. The requested change order is within the adopted budget. So gentlemen, as you are aware, the Sykesville Main Street Water and Sewer Main Improvements Project was a challenge from the onset. The overall work involved replacing decades-old infrastructure within the Main Street right-of-way while maintaining water and sewer service to the residential and commercial properties, as well as keeping the roadway and sidewalks open to traffic and, and pedestrians. One of the major issues that we had with this project was the lack of accuracy of the as-built drawings. Several of the encountered site conditions were, were different than what was expected as per the as-built drawings. 
th this overall change order request is for a collection of nine smaller change order requests or PCOs by the contractor. I will briefly explain each of these over the next several minutes. As per the briefing paper, the change order equates to approximately 4.9% of the overall approved construction project. This is well within the Bureau's expectations and the challenges of rehabilitation projects. These items would have to, would, would have, to have been addressed one way or another. We are not being taken advantage of or gouged by the contractor. Each, PC, each PCO was thoroughly reviewed by Bureau staff as well as, as our consultant. Several of the requested dollar amounts were adjusted downward following that review. So the first of the PCOs was excessive, was the excavation of excessive rock on Main Street that was not identified with boring samples. During the, the engineering analysis and plan development, boring samples were performed by JMT as per normal standards. Uh, we, 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 the uh, contractor in, encountered excessive rock outside of these boring, boring locations. So the options that we had available to us were to increase the borings at the initial onset at, at, some, at, at a larger cost for the plan design or going with, with what we did and risking, the, risking rock that, that was encountered in between the existing boring samples. So e either way, the, the work would have had to have been paid for one, one way or another. Uh, the second of these was the installation of an additional water tee and piping at the intersection of Oklahoma Road and Main Street. This was simply missed during the engineering and, and review phase. The work was required and would, have been, and would have increased the original bid had the work been shown on the plans. The, the value of this was approximately $8,000. The previous uh, item, the, 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 the initial, the submitted cost by the contractor was $43,400 in round figures. It was reduced to $39,600. The third item was actions and delays related to the, to the discovery, removal, and disposal of contaminated soils. I believe I, I presented to, to this board previously the, the, the concerns about the, the uh, underground gasoline storage tank. These soils were, were discovered in close proximity to, to that abandoned gasoline storage tank and had to be disposed of as per MDE guidelines. The contractor had to call in environmental subcontractors to, to perform that work. The amount of this change order was $14,928. The next item was extra depth of construction that, that was related to a fire hydrant. The installation needed an additional two feet of vertical depth beyond what was shown on the plans. This was a small PCO and the amount was $2,400. The next large item was a necessary change from shoring boxes to wood lagging on a specific segment of Main Street. During construction, the, the contractor encountered gas and utilities lines not shown on the construction drawings. The Bureau had no record of these being in place. And because of these lines, the contractor was unable to, to use standard width metal trench boxes. Wood lacking had to be used in its place. The, the, this amounted to approximately 327 man hours and 219 equipment hours. And the dollar amount was reduced from $43,700 to approximately $32,100. The next example was, or the, the next PCO was chipping of a concrete encasement. The contractor found that a six inch diameter water main was encased in concrete while, while when preparing for a manhole installation. To, to prevent damage to that water main line, the concrete had to be chipped away. Uh, that, that, that took approximately 131 man hours at a cost of about $9,700. The next PCO was the opening and investigation of the abandoned underground gasoline storage tank as required by MDE. That work also needed the use of the subcontractor. During this work, fortunately, MDE confirmed that, that the tank was abandoned in place properly. The cost of that was approximately, was approximately $11,000 even. The next item was the installation of an additional water tee and piping at the intersection of Main Street and Springfield Avenue. Again, this was simply missed during the, the engineering and, and review phase. The work would have been required anyway and would have increased the original bid had the work been shown on the plans. That, that dollar amount was approximately $8,300. The next to last item was the additional exploration for activity for, for connecting the water mains at the intersection of Springfield Avenue and Main Street. The Bureau's as-built drawings simply did not show correctly the, the layout of the underground water mains. The, this resulted in, in the construction plans being in, inaccurate and the, the, the exploration work was necessary to, to provide proper direction to the contractor for the connection of the water mains. This amounted to approximately $8,800. The, 
The final item was the installation of a yard fire hydrant at Centennial Park on Baldwin Drive. Once again, th this item was simply missed during, during the, uh, the, the engineering and review phase. This work would have been re required as well and would have increased the original bid by approximately $1,600. So finally, with respect to the inaccuracy of the Bureau's ASBEL drawings, since my tenure as Bureau Chief began in 2018 and I became aware of these issues, I have stressed the importance of, of, the, of accurate ASBEL drawings moving forward for all of our construction projects. This issue is being corrected, but it will take time to cycle through. So with that, any questions for me? Yes. Um, yeah. What percentage completes the job? Is it pretty close to complete what's the potential is there potential for more change orders or you think it's pretty much far enough along we are virtually done uh, we're, we're, we're at about 98 99 percent there is one item left that we're going to wait until after the uh, the 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 holiday season it, it's mm -hmm. a lateral lateral sewer or water connection I'm, I, I I I forget which but there will be one one more small occurrence of work on Main Street. is this a working day or calendar day job how are they doing on time and and in his adjustment of days part of the change order this change order has no adjustment of days we, previ a previous change order did increase the days by I believe 43 working days um, so so we, we so this did not include any additional days they were they were part of that 43 day okay is the state taking any responsibility on this as far as the cost or no this absolutely is all on not. us it's all ours <laughs> absolutely not okay and how many of these again uh you said were missed during the planning phase there were three of them, three of they, them? They were, there were two water t connections and one yard hydrant and again with the complicated underground construction yeah. research that we had had encountered for this i'm i'm happily surprised that it was only three okay Okay, any other uh, conversation, discussion, questions? If not, is there a motion? Motion to approve a change order to Pessoa Construction Company incorporated in the amount of $136,767.16 for the Sykesville, Maryland 851 Main Street Water and Sewer Main Improvements Project. Second. So I might have missed this, but where is this money coming from? It comes from, from a capital account that was originally earmarked for the Sykesville uh, uh, streetscape improvements. Um, there, there, there is more than adequate funding to to, uh, to cover this change order. Okay, thanks. Good question. Okay, any other uh, questions? Discussion. Seen here, none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. Let's talk about the detention center maintenance contract. Oh, morning, commissioners. Morning, morning, gentlemen. <clears throat> During the FY24 budget process, the board approved contracting out some elements of the detention center maintenance. Upon developing a scope of work and receiving bids, the cost of the contract has exceeded the estimated amount of $182,500. A single bid was received in the amount of $349,518 and a one-time cost of $10,000. Additional costs would include overtime, supply markups, and up to a 4% year price increase on that contract. Upon reviewing the contract, the Bureau of Facilities and Budget evaluated the options of adding two specialized staff positions to county payroll. Uh, this option would have an ongoing cost of $204,720, $720, and a one-time cost of $77,300. This one-time cost would include a vehicle, specialized training for those employees, tools, and laptops. Overtime costs are built into this estimate and no additional supply markups would be needed. So some additional background, the Bureau of Facilities uh, previously had an employee assigned to this site and used other staff when needed. Since the departure of the assigned staff member several years ago and due to other needs within the county at other sites, the Bureau currently rotates staff to this site on an as-needed basis. The initial budget pricing was developed based on what we were getting by with at that time. Upon reviewing the contractor's proposal and reviewing new data within our work order system, it's clear that two full-time employees are needed to properly, maintain, to properly maintain this site. As the building ages and with it operating 24 hours a day, additional resources are needed to ensure systems remain in good working order. System failures can have an increased negative impact on the overall operation and security of the building. 
The goal of the contract or new hires is to provide the detention center with a specialized maintenance unit that is properly trained to work in this type of environment and be available on site during normal daytime operations. While the contract is straightforward in requiring the contractor to fulfill their obligations, should you decide to move forward with hiring county staff as one of the options, we will likely struggle with hiring qualified individuals. So just want to make that completely clear if that is the direction you go. And we currently have open positions in the Bureau of Facilities. Uh, we consistently struggle with filling those positions. So just wanted to make that aware up front that that would be a, a, an issue for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there a hybrid approach where we contract out while we're working to hire individuals? I mean, or is it a, either this or that? You know, it was a bid, bid process. We haven't discussed any other options with the particular contractor. Yeah. Um, they reviewed our scope and provided us with that pricing. Um, could there be a hybrid uh, potentially? I mean, that'd be something we could go back and discuss that with them, but um, at this time, they're their proposal was to have a long-term contract. Right, well, it's in their best interest. Yeah, sure. Um, but if we hire two folks for long-term interest, it's in our best interest. Um, but like you say, it could be very difficult <coughs> to right. hire the right quality folks to come in and do this. Um, and when that price originally came back, um, I did reach out to the contractor and um, we were discussing potentially adding some different buildings on that contract such as the junction which is right beside the detention center and the pretrial building as well so those two buildings would be encompassed under this contract as well for the same price. Um, when we did our initial walkthrough uh, like Jason's mentioned um, they were figuring one full-time employee, one FTE. Um, after review um, they figured it would be two employees. And I did question that to the contractor. And one of their main concerns there, commissioners, were um, if we do sign a contract, they didn't want to leave the county high and dry with one full-time employee because that employee is going to need to take some PTO, is going to be off, could have some sick leave, where now we're going to be pulling our resources from facilities again to the detention center to make up that shortfall. Um, so that was also brought up with the, with the, uh, the contractor as well. Okay. If if the decision today is to hire the additional people, is it is it also a possibility that you could pull resources from facilities to be a band aid as they were being hired? Yeah, that's that's currently what we're doing now. We're, we're yeah. our resources are stretched pretty thin, so it becomes more and more challenging. But oh, yeah. that's currently how we're operating now. So when we say we have, we would have an ongoing cost of two hundred four thousand dollars. I mean, obviously that would be for the first year because over time that would naturally increase with inflation and other and other associated costs. And and so I guess um, and and please help me understand. So we budgeted one hundred eighty two thousand five hundred dollars for uh, the the maintenance. Mm -hmm. But the cost of adding two for but the the one bidder that we had came in at almost three hundred fifty thousand dollars. And then the option of adding two specialized staff positions to the county's payroll is $204,720. So is that because we underestimated the amount of money necessary for maintenance, or is it because uh, what would put it at $204,000 for two uh, employees versus $182,000? Yeah, the, the initial um, estimate that we have for budgeting purposes was an estimate based on housing one employee there. But through the analysis of the, um, the proposal and our analysis through our work order system, which is new to us as well, so we had more data to go by once we went through this process, um, and it's the, the data showing us that we, that we need to, we, we underestimated the amount of man hours that we had at the site. But now that we have more information, it is pointing us towards two people. Uh, okay, so, and please do forgive me. So, the the original estimated 182,500 if if that was for what we believed at the time was going to be one person correct why then now are we budgeting 204,000 instead of 365,000 one's the contracted amount versus the in-house okay. amount yes the 300 um, the 349 518 is the contracted out through CGL 
Oh, oh I, I apologize. But so, but uh, what I, I apologize. What I'm getting at. So we, we budgeted $182,000 for one person, figuring that's what it was going to be. Correct. Right? And I, I get that the bid amount was for 350000 but the request uh, is for an ongoing cost of 204000 So why is the 204, 204 instead of 300? One is Six. the contractor's it, cost, and one is the, if you hire the people directly. Okay, okay. So the 380 is if you it's, hire the contractor, because you have to pay their overhead and other things. So you're paying slightly more for outside services than you would pay if you had a, two county employees. All right, I think I'm getting that. Because, I, I mean, just from a pure, from pure numbers, it seems like it should be a greater amount than 204000 For county employees? Right. So I'm not, I'm not like saying that Roberta is not wise, but the old wise man, I'm not saying old, that old, but <laughs> Mr. Zaleski, what do you have to share? So glad I stopped by. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's confusing you is that 180 number was the projected cost at that time for contracting it out with an assumption that they were going to have one employee. So it's okay. not one of our employees versus two of our employees. Okay. Does that help? Much better. Thank you very much. Cer certainly not mechanical at all, and certainly wise from this corner of the, <laughs> the chamber as well. Thank you. I, oh, yeah, I understand please. the operational need. That's what not this was about. But if we shouldn't be confused if we're sitting up here, if we're taking money from reserve for contingencies for something, I, I need to understand what we're doing. And I still don't. I still don't know exactly what numbers we're talking about here. Okay. Nothing against the operational need. I understand, but I. Well, I, we, we, we're up here sitting here confused, and we shouldn't be. Yeah. Tell me if I understand it. So you, you budgeted 180 to find a contract. Right. You put it out for a bid, and the bid came in almost double that. Almost double that, correct. So there was never a plan to hire people. So now you're looking at this and say, wow, we didn't budget enough. Correct. We're learning. What if we did it ourselves? And so you're we can do it ourselves and save some money it's not going to be easy hiring people et cetera, et cetera. but th that's an option that, that was never considered back at the 182 correct that's correct right and then like i say the 182 came in with um knowing that it was be probably one time full-time employee and then when we did the walkthroughs with the contractors they were pricing out one-time employee as well um, so we took those numbers and put it into the budget for your approval. Um, needless to say, once they dug their nails into it and we had more data on this facility, um, we're looking at almost 4,000 hour man hours that we're currently working at this correctional facility um, to employees. So the numbers add up that they're looking for two employees for this position. And the two, so I, I also want to be very clear on this is the 349 is one time cost. No, that's, yeah, that's, a, that's the contracted cost per year. Per year. So it's not one time, it's 349 ongoing. ongoing. That's correct. And possibly increasing in future that's years. That's correct. correct. Yeah, so it's 349 this or, year, more next year. Or 204 ongoing. for hiring two individuals. Two county employees. Ongoing, with a 77,000 one time cost. The reason we would go with 349 is because it's kind of bird in the hand. We get them the here now, and we know that they'd be available right now. Is that? Yes, yeah. that's, that's part of it. And their, their staff's also trained to work in these type of environments, so they have a, a much better skill set to work at that site than than our current staff does. We have any staff, and and like going back to Commissioner Kyler, the the Band-Aid approach, where we have folks cross trained to have the ability while we're going through the hiring process yeah i mean we're currently filling that void now with our current staff right so if we if the direction was to go and hire two individuals for the county we continue to provide that support and maintenance over there how yes. many unfilled uh, rec uh recs do we have right now in facilities in facilities six total out of uh we have 42 on the roster so eight percent and the 42 is also different Seven percent different you know job titles yeah yes. okay it's i think it's three or four on the mechanical side yeah three or four Those, on mechanical three so three or four of like like apples. hvac yeah, yeah. and that's Mechanic, what this yep. is mm -hmm. yes and, so and if we go with the option to hire 
facilities is hiring two more people, not the detention center. Correct. Correct. They yeah. would be under facilities, facilities, but the right. job description would be specific for the detention exactly. center. They would know up front they are working in a correctional facility. Does Correct. the does the sheriff and the corrections, do you gentlemen have any perspective on whether you would prefer to contract or to have someone in house? I, I apologize to the mic. He's making the exercise, I'm not. <laughs> we would prefer the contractor just because of the, they give us a time frame of response time, right. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, where nothing against the maintenance department, it's a, it's a hindrance for them because they are down manpower. Well, it's a hindrance now because they don't have the, they're down the manpower, manpower, but Correct. if we. And, and when they, once they do hire, they're right. also gonna have to pass our background check. So that's also another nuance to that. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. What is the one time cost of 77000 Uh That's for uh, vehicles, laptop training, and specialized, uh, I'm sorry, specialized training, laptop tools, and a vehicle. Hmm. So, and I'm certainly not afraid to, you know, tackle this particular aspect of the topic so and then again somebody please correct me if I'm off with my math or off with the numbers right totally understand the position of the uh, of corrections totally understand uh, why they would prefer to go with a contractor but I also want to bring up for the sake of discussion that we're still looking at a seven million dollar deficit heading into budget season right? um, 182 if we were to find people in-house to do this Right. We would be increasing the amounts over the 182,000 by about 12,000, give or take. If we went with contracting someone, that's uh, an additional almost $150,000 a year, in addition to that 182,000, which means that we're looking at again, like Commissioner Kyler said, 350,000 ongoing. Um, the first one is 22 grand, not 12. If that makes a difference. 20, okay. <laughs> First time, 20, okay. You were, you were trying to con us. <laughs> <laughs> Did the tie give me away? The used car salesman tie? Keep going. <laughs> so I, I guess the, the what, we want to make sure that the individuals who are providing the service to the maintenance center are qualified, capable, and competent. Uh, but we also understand that there is a, a fiscal uh, reality as well that if we decide to proceed with a contract that is coming way above what we had budgeted, um, that is going to be a, a difficult, that, that's gonna be another difficult aspect of the budget going forward. I guess my question then would be, we received one bid and how long did we advertise for the bids? Uh, the minimum for purchasing to go out, I think it was uh, 25, 27 days. We had uh, four companies do the walkthrough when we did the initial walkthrough, um, and CGL was the only company who came back with a proposal for us. The other companies never responded back to us, whether or not the project was too big for them or they didn't see what they liked, I'm not sure. So we didn't have a reason from them that would no, indicate why, not. okay. So. I'm almost thinking maybe we put this out to bid again to see if we can't get closer to that amount, but to provide the contracted services that the that Corrections is looking for. I mean, I, I I know it would be very easy for us today to say, okay, well, we'll just go with the one bid for 350000 But again, that's almost an additional $150,000 per year that will add to the $7 million that we're already in deficit. But if we can spend another month to bid this out to try to find someone who can fulfill uh, the the requirements of this, but at a rate that is far closer, or, or at least even in the neighborhood of 182,000, I would be a lot more comfortable with that. Uh-oh, Ted's coming up. He is. Um, Mechanical response. Have we used the contractor before? We have not. Um, <coughs> CGL is a, a contractor who specializes in correctional facilities maintenance. Uh, they hold all the contracts for Baltimore County Correctional Facilities, Baltimore City, uh, the state of Georgia, Virginia. They're all over the nation. Yeah. Um, and this is what they specialize in. So, um, so they, there's a level of confidence in. There is. Um, 
And another good thing for the contractor contracting that out would be they're going to be the ones that are going to be hiring the employees to go to this facility. So it's going to be up to their HR department to find, to pay them, to to have that ongoing potential of nobody's fulfilling our spots. So then what they would do, commissioners, is they would pull resources from other correctional facilities to work at our facility until they get that contract um, to the get that employee hired so it ain't isn't like the county would sign a contract and we would have no support from CGL they would pull from their other local resources and they would use their own equipment vehicle all that kind of stuff correct okay I apologize Ted on uh, Commissioner Vigliotti's question about um, rebidding uh, I think the problem we have right now is we based our budget on a projected cost that this company gave us, but that's not what they actually came in to bid. So I think we're looking at that initial number as a flawed number now, and I think there's little reason to think that a new bid is gonna get us that number. Okay, that makes sense. Thank, thank you for that context. So, the, okay, so the 182,000 then is, is totally out of the realm of reality, okay. Yeah, yeah I think, I think they saw a problem with the bid. You've evaluated the bid, and you think it's reasonable. It, it's going to be you will be hard pressed to find something cheaper, and so then the one solution is to hire two people. Which I feel like what you just said, based you know, for whatever it is, fifty percent, we probably want to hire two people. And which goes back to that hybrid taking this contract is you know for. A year with a extension of or two years with an extension of a year or one plus two whatever it may be design it to then also have the ability to go after filling these you know positions mm -hmm. um, I, I think that would be a responsible way of doing it so we're not just relying on contract we're working towards filling our county positions um, which also would give us more flexibility in those positions as, you know, the scope of work and time change. To do. But and if facilities has been doing it, yeah. although right. they don't seem to smile about it, um, <laughs> no. I think you keep doing that and you hire the people. But that's my, my humble opinion. Um, we, don't, we can't afford the contractor right now. And, and I guess a year from now, if you're not happy with how this is going then you always could bid it again and and say you know we don't want to do it we'll put it out for bids but I, I I think we hire the people and let facilities grit their teeth and handle it so what's the risk of continuing as Commissioner Kyler said what is not being done or what is the risk of something that will not be done if we continue as is over the next year and then come back to us what yeah so so currently you know as the building ages the infrastructure yep. wears and tears so it's going to cause us more resources to be put in that facility um obviously more resources in that facility leads a little pocket within the entire carroll county and at other facilities uh we're currently filling that void um it is a little bit more stress on the individuals on staff um even the stress inside the correctional facilities puts it on the employees. Um, to be honest with you, um, a lot of the employees, yes, they go in there and, and do what they have to do because it's their, it's their job and that's what we do. Um, but in a correctional facility, it is a little bit different, different aspect. Um, hiring the two employees, yes, uh, we would still fill that void, obviously. We, that's just what we do. Um, but those two individuals that we bring on would be just for the detention center correctional facility itself. Which, which I think is a, a good solution. And you currently evidently have some employees who have met the background checks and can work in there. All of our facility employees go through the background checks, yes. <clears throat> so you're moving towards, working towards hiring two additional folks. Yeah, I think folks. are the two, and it's, it's a lot of money if you don't yeah and and I I'm, I'm very skeptical being on the other side of the fence of 
tying into a contractor who this is their specialty and nobody bid against them, um, how long would the contract be um, with with multiple years? Um, year to year, five year uh, minimum. Okay. Five year minimum. Okay. Commissioner Collar, I think you and I are uh, agreeing, We're right? Agreeing. So, yeah. uh, how about that? It could happen. <laughs> oh. That's because he didn't hear half the things you said. <laughs> um, any other discussion? Motion to hire the two additional facility staff members to work within the deten detention center and transfer the necessary funds from the reserve for contingency. Second. Okay, I have a motion. I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. That was a tough one. Good discussion. Agreed. Tough situation. Oh, you're kidding me. Another change order? This is Wait, like I, I said that out loud. I apologize. This is like Hanukkah come early for you, isn't it? <laughs> no, that's December 7th. Um, okay, let's talk about additional administrative services for the Washington Road Safe Routes to School Sidewalk Project. And they, were, they came up and were very confident of what you were going to do next. <laughs> you see, they send me up here for change orders all the time. <laughs> The Office of Procurement and Cooperation with the Bureau of Building Construction requests your approval to increase the contract with KCI Technologies in the amount of $8,000 for additional administrative services for the Washington Road Safe Routes to School Sidewalk Project. KCI Technologies has been facilitating the process as we navigate through the many requirements that are involved with the Safe Routes to School Sidewalk Program. This change order for an additional $8,000 exceeds the 10% of the original contract per the resolution number 1162-2022 delegation of authority requires the board's approval to spend those additional I'm sorry approval to spend these additional funds the amount is within the adopted budget um, just a little background the uh, safe routes to school sidewalk program is managed by the Maryland State Highway Administration it's very complex with a, a multiple agencies within SHA um, that are reviewing and commenting on construction drawings, the invitation for bid, the plan specifications, and estimate documents. Uh, the consultant KCI Technologies for this project had to make numerous revisions, additions, and corrections to these documents throughout the review and approval process. Um, SHA continued to make changes throughout the design and approval process to their construction details, specifications, policies, and procedures which affected the plans and bid documents. These revis revisions necessitated an increase in the original consulting fees to obtain final approvals to be available to bid the project, and the project is currently out to bid with um, a closing date of today. And we couldn't get State Highway to uh, fund $8,000? That was going to be my question. <laughs> it, it, so it, oh, sorry. Uh, it, it, um, depending on how the bids come in, it is a possibility that we can be reimbursed. We can ask for reimbursement through the grant. Um, however, depending on how they come in, we also could um, obtain possibly an 80-20 where they would pay 80% of it and the county would have to pay 20%. Okay. So we can try to get that reimbursed, but that's, that's not a guarantee but, well, because depending on how the bids do come 70, 200, whatever it may be. I mean, take it. Okay. Any uh, further discussion on this? I'll motion to approve the increase to the contract with KCI Technologies in the amount of $8,000 with the direction to attempt to get the State Highway Administration to reimburse the funds. I'll second that, especially the latter part. Is there any further discussion on this? Is in here none all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank, thank you, you very commissioners. much. Thank Appreciate you very your time. Much. Free construction services contract for the Carroll County Sheriff's Office Headquarters building. Morning. Morning. The county requested detailed proposals to provide pre construction services for the Carroll County Sheriff's Office headquarters building. The owner will retain a construction manager as constructor in a two part contract. The first part of the contract shall be to conduct pre construction services with the intention of awarding 
the second part of the contract for CMC services based on based upon successful and satisfactory completion of pre-construction services, as well as the su successful negotiation of the guaranteed maximum price for the construction of the project. The, also, the Office of Procurement received 11 statements of qualification, of which three were shortlisted and issued a request for proposal. After evaluations and presentations were completed, Dustin Construction Incorporated was the highest ranked based on their technical presentation and financial proposal. During the pre-construction phase of the project, Dustin Construction will work directly with the architect, Mans Woodward, to develop schedules, recommend alternates, prepare construction cost models and estimates, conduct value engineering studies, study labor conditions, identify and address constructability issues, and advise on the most efficient sequencing of construction work for the project. This process will help reduce change orders to provide cost savings throughout this process. The pre-construction services phase includes the CMC's bidding and negotiations required to prepare and submit the GMP. Once the pre-construction phase is complete, the county and the CMC will come to an agreement on a negotiated GMP. If the county and the CMC cannot come to an agreement, negotiate, negotiations will then terminate and the other procurement method will be conducted to, pr to proceed with the construction phase of the pro project. The Office of Procurement, in cooperation with the Build Bureau of Building Construction, requests your approval to award a contract for the pre-construction services for the Carroll County Sheriff's Office Headquarters Building to Dustin Construction Company in the amount of $225,000. This amount is within the adopted budget. Are there any questions on this? Well, it's nice to see that they are looking at a process that will help to reduce change orders. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, just as a... I guess like a general question. I mean, I, I, I don't know, and, and you know, please correct me if, if there is, I mean, I don't know, is there some kind of uh, process or way that we can go about reviewing certain things in a way to try to prevent change orders? Just, I mean, I, I don't know whether or not there is a, uh, I don't know, we review how we go about bidding certain things or we, I mean, I, I don't know. It just, it seems, because I, I know I share Commission Ralstein's frustration with, with change orders, and I know they happen from time to time, but I mean, I, I don't know whether or not there's, there's some remedy to try to prevent more of them from happening. I think the thing to keep in mind with change orders is a lot, most of the time, not all of the time, it's unforeseen. Right. Um, you can't predict what's in the ground, unfortunately. Um, in this case, with this procurement method, this is the first time I believe that the county has done this type of procurement method. Um, it's being used industry-wide. Um, it's um, be, being that we're bringing the contractor on board at the same time with the architect, um, it does help to reduce those change orders because the architect and, and the con contractor working together then sees pieces, you know, that one another might not look down the road and find as an issue. So hopefully um, this procurement method um, will help in this case, you know, mm -hmm. do that. But do you have any? One other thing is yeah. that when you have when you have the contractor on board early, they're the ones that are in that industry working along with the architect right. and in our best interest. And we, we control both of them. That way we make sure we get the best value out of it. Right. So change orders are a normal process in construction, unfortunately, but we try to limit them. Right. I like this idea. This, this, and, I apologize. Uh, yeah, I want to say um, change orders are good. Um, if if you try to make a contractor cover everything you're you're going to pay a lot but if there are things that like say scopes missed or and rock was a good example in that last one if if you want to make them cover all rock they will but then if they don't hit any rock you're still paying correct so so sometimes change orders are good and and with a, a construction manager it's pretty standard it, it's nice to know you're going to have the same guy, but you do have to hold him to a GMP. Mm -hmm. you, you can't, if you leave it open-ended, that would right. probably be a mistake. So doing this in two steps is probably the smart way to do it, and hopefully Dustin will, will, will do well and, and do a good GMP and be the CM too. And, and either sound. way, we're going to... The, the plan is to have a CNM, CM for this whole project. Right. And this process was used, um, D you know, Dustin uh, helped construct, or did construct the um, East Middle yeah, School East Middle, yeah. And this same uh, method was used 
um, for that I like this. procurement process. I like this. Or, Yes, Commissioner, I just wanted to uh, point out, so to, to Commissioner Kyler's point, um, architectural drawings will never be 100% correct or fill in all the gaps that need to happen once we start constructing. So we always have a, at least a 10% contingency that we hold, knowing that we are going to have change orders on a project. Right. Uh, it's when you get beyond where we budgeted for those change orders that I guess you know could be a problem, but we, we generally stay underneath what we when, we, when we put a contingency on the project, we generally don't come ask for more money. So. No, I, I appreciate it, and you know, I I know I make my comments, but uh, maybe I shouldn't make them as loud because uh, it, it, it's from the history from running the installation. You know, when change orders would come in, and uh, it just I don't want to say it became a, a running joke, but it was just one of those co continuing sagas that we deal with. Um, but there is definitely reason to have change orders and to think you can get a hundred percent solution first go around is fooling yourself so um no but i, I appreciate it i appreciate the discussion um the the question i have is is more big picture the money that we are putting into the sheriff's office headquarters building uh the totality of it um is there a, I know there's a way, uh, but to continue to keep us apprised of that large figure, because, you know, uh, as our role is, as you know, to design and execute the budget, but it's also to provide confidence in our community on how we are designing and executing the budget. And, you know, sometimes we get comments from the community why is this happening or why is that happening and millions and millions of dollars are going here or there to equip, to equip us uh hey this is a 10-year project this is how much has been allocated this is how much has been executed just to give a little bit more clarity uh transparency but more clarity uh for us i think would also be beneficial so sure. okay absolutely and it's not just this but there's other projects that sure. we know of that are large ticket item projects so and, oh and yeah she, please uh, and she mentioned east middle um and regardless if it was the same cm or not one of the values this brings and i'm glad to see you're getting somebody on here sooner rather than later um east middle that's when steel went up I, my, yeah. I, my, my memory isn't the best but i think it was 12 14 million over budget when they turned in the bid you'll like this <laughs> one of the jobs of the cm is they changed some scopes mm -hmm. but they got that down to within two or three million so the school could be built quickly and that's that's the value a cm brings you cool and that's why you want to tie them to a gmp once they're through pre-construction well, with that said they didn't use like rusted metal or anything like that they, <laughs> so well, yeah but but <laughs> and did, and i'm not sure where your philosophy is did we spend an extra two or three million or do we save nine that's right <laughs> <laughs> oh there's so many things i could say no okay any other discussion on this that's of value if not is there a motion <laughs> motion to award the contract for construction manager as constructor pre -constru as constructor pre-construction services contract for the carroll county sheriff's office headquarters building to dustin construction incorporated in the amount of two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars second i have a motion i have a second is there further discussion seen here none all in favor aye aye, aye. okay let's talk about thank you Commissioner. thank you work. thank you both absolutely to perform a review of a recently constructed roundabout on Sullivan Road. Carrie's on a roll this morning. Great day court. Morning, gentlemen. Good morning, morning, commissioners. Go for it. The Office of Procurement Cooperation with the Bureau of Engineering requests your approval to use the county's term contractor, Johnson, Miraman, and Thompson Incorporated to conduct a roundabout evaluation on Sullivan Road at Great Day Court in Westminster in the amount of $28,813.75. This amount is within the FY24 budget. So commissioners, um, 
this particular uh, roundabout was originally constructed uh, by the developer of uh, Windy Hills. This is a residential subdivision in Westminster. And then during the last board, uh, it was reported that uh, under construction, uh, members of the community and others believe that it wouldn't work. So we um, evaluated uh, the roundabout uh, now three times and uh, at this point have reached an impasse or are unable to move it forward. Uh, so as such, uh, we believe that the, the best way to do this is to receive an evaluation of the roundabout, an independent evaluation, uh, and get feedback from that evaluator. And uh, Chris has some additional details on exactly how we plan to do that. Chris. So we've uh, brought in one of our term contractors uh, to perform an independent evaluation of the existing roundabout based on current standards. Um, American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials and the uh, NCHRP 672, which is the design guide for roundabouts. Um, they're going to evaluate existing conditions and determine uh, if any modifications need to be made. Uh, we've used this term contractor before. Um, they expect to have the work completed by the end of January. They're currently behind uh, with their survey crew. Uh, they're backed up, so that's why January is the date. So, Commissioners, we're glad to answer any other questions you may have or address any of your concerns, and that's our report. Okay. Any uh, questions, comments? And just very briefly, why are we having the review? What is the What do we hope to get out of it? So, um, our independent testing uh, that we have conducted ourselves using motor vehicles of a variety of sizes, those vehicles have failed to be able to make it through clearly. Not all, but some. Um, and we have attempted uh, to work uh, with uh, the parties that be to get that corrected and have reached an impasse. So our only part at this point is that we uh, take an evaluation ourselves to indeed see if there is an issue um, and what those issues are that need to be corrected. Perfect. Makes perfect sense. Thank you. Um, when, the, and I don't want to get into the whole history, but so the, one of the reasons the roundabouts considered is for the future Matter Branch Road. Yes. What is the possible timing for that? It's in the master plan. It's currently not funded for construction. We do not own all the right-of-way. We did attempt to acquire some of the right-of-way fairly recently. We were not successful. Um, but it is needed. If you, you know, I know the state highway is currently looking at a planning study for from 140 to Magna Way because of the congestion and issues there. This would address some of those. This connection would address some of those. Is it possible 10 years, 20 years? Uh, yeah, it is. I, I, I it, know. It's, I it's, mean, again, we're talking about funding. Right. It has to be funded in order to construct it. I right. think constructing it isn't is fairly reasonable to do. Yeah, so I think the road, uh, again, commissioners, is based on your all's uh, priorities because it, it does totally evolve around funding. And when Chris m mentions land, it is a small portion. Uh, the county uh, does own the majority of the land that's needed to construct the road, uh, but there is a small portion it does not own that is vital to that construction. Yeah, because I, I think one of the... Uh, well, obviously, they're aware that that's the future of this, and they're evaluating that. It's it's hindsight's wonderful. Um, it's a shame, in my opinion, we didn't just require acquire the right of way and let this roundabout be built as part of that project instead of this project. But it, it's tough, and uh, and you said it well. There's vehicles that can't get around it. And uh, I know if we had a public hearing, which I'm wondering if we should, we're going to hear the first thing people are going to say is leave Sullivan Road open. Well, that might not be a viable option. It might be. I don't. Should the engineer evaluate the possibility of, of leaving that open until Meadow Branch happens, or you think that's too far off? Well, I don't think the way the Great Day Court and the entrance is on to solve and that that is feasible. They will not meet sight distance or, you know, it, the angles are just too severe to have that as a, as a permanent. Yeah. yeah, but my worry is that might be the cheapest 
um, fix. So it wasn't within the scope of what we, we contracted. So obviously, if we are going to be adding to the scope, that certainly uh, would change um, the cost from, oh, I know. from the evaluation. And as Chris said, other things may need to be done at that point because we uh, do stay there on site distance. To your point, um, this is a project that, as you all know, takes many years to come to fruition. Uh, and when this was identified to us as an issue, while likely we probably didn't even see it during the time period when it was in the planning. Um, you know, our obligation is to our customers. As you've heard me say before, the taxpayers, and when it was identified, that's that's when we got into action with doing this testing. So, I, you know, there may have been other ways to address it back then. This is what we're dealing with now. Oh, and the best way that we see, unless you all provide other direction to move forward. Is uh, related but not part of this motion, um, the developer and the contractor, if, if this goes till January, the fix could be a couple more. We could be next June or July till this is surfaced. Um, have they had bond reductions? Are we being as fair as we can to the developer if, if, if they either have or surface pave everything up to this? Is it possible to do reductions but still hang them as part of the responsibility for this or is that this this seems to be a, a lot of projects drag but this just seems to be getting extreme to me so we have been working on this with the developer for a long time uh, and the developer as with other developers on on county projects um, until this road or this roundabout is accepted uh, does and has, I will say, uh, works with us on a regular basis uh, to maintain it, keep the grass mowed. Uh, you know, if there's a pothole within that area that's under construction, uh, he takes care of it. Um, so, so he does all of those things. We too um, would have liked to move it along a little faster, but again, we have reached an impasse between the oh, two I parties. Know. So we, we, uh, we are where we are today for you. Okay. Okay. Any other uh, questions or comments, discussion? So the, so the crux of this issue is that the roundabout may not be sufficient enough for certain vehicles? Yes, sir. But isn't that standard state? Well, according highway? to the guidelines, when roundabouts are built, part of the guidelines state and, and read that, that the engineer of record must take into account the normal traffic. So we are talking about normal business traffic that has existed on that road for many, many years, normal businesses. So these just aren't um, vehicles that occasionally pass. These are vehicles that always have and will continue to regularly pass. So what concerns us is, is that if, it, if they do not fit, and these are 18 wheelers, then when it is opened, if they, for example, are driving up over the sidewalks or the curbs in the gutter, what then is going to happen is that's likely, more likely to become damaged. When it becomes damaged, then it costs more public money to then go back and repair those items if it's damaged and if that becomes an ongoing problem. So, so that's the issue and is the, the, the design of the roundabout and, and where we go from here on that. And these are regularly traveled vehicles, so these are not just random. Okay, I understand. So what I think we're getting towards is, is spending the money to determine that it needs to be bigger, probably. And then that's just what happens next. You start pulling up concrete and putting down asphalt again to make it wider. And So it, it again, after our last test, uh, we did, um, um, Director Bokey uh, did have, my understanding, discussion with the developer. Um, and there were some things it may not be widening it there may be some changes that could be made for example uh to curb and gutter in certain areas maybe you know flattening it out so that uh things could get around for example one of the vehicles that has the most time which would be using it the most are our snow plows our snow plows can't plow snow in that roundabout because they can't keep their plow down and traverse it without banging the curb gutter and sidewall sure yeah okay Motion to approve using the term contractor Johnson Mir Murmurin. Am I saying that correctly? Murmurin? Thank you. And Thompson to conduct a roundabout evaluation at Sullivan Road at Great Day Court in the amount of $28,813.75. Second. 
I have a motion, I have a second. It is, to me, just interesting. I mean, $30,000 to study a roundabout, you know. Just, uh, so the current engineering rates are a lot of very money. high right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'd be curious how long it takes for them to put out, you know, the equipment necessary to study a roundabout. And is it a value of $30,000? Well, obviously it is if that's what the prices are. But wow, you know, maybe I should be an engineer. And, and looking at roundabouts. Like they said, this, is, this has been ongoing. It hasn't been free to do the evaluations you guys have already done to get to this point. And, and I'm, I'm like you, this is, um, I'd rather see 28 grand go to changing the curb. Yeah. But, but it, this truly isn't that black and white. It's 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 a shame. But I, I hate this. But it's the right next <laughs> next step. You know. I mean, I think that's also where Commissioner Garen was going as well. Was we're spending a lot of money on a yeah. study of a circle that. I don't want to say it should be I mean, common just, sense, you know, but, it, yeah. you know, but. So, commissioners, and, you know, full disclosure, to put it on the table as we've had those discussions, the road has not, the roundabout has not been accepted. But in order for the county to do any work in that right now, that would be the need, right? You would have to accept it, and then once it is accepted, the, you, us, customers, would then have any responsibility and all responsibility for those repairs that would have to be made. Right. Which could be more than that because yeah. this is not you know there's infrastructure that is traveling under this roundabout so it's not just a circle it includes storm water storm drain storm drain pipe um, and again all those drains are, are built in there so if any of that has to be moved then we are talking substantial cost you, and we, we don't know that yet you, you made this hill stop selling uh, <laughs> um, to get it. you know it, it's just uh, you know it's one of those non glamorous expenses that are embedded in our budget to do things like this, which, you know, may, makes it difficult just to, you know, understand or sometimes, just, but it's not necessarily as difficult to accept because it has to be done as you're sharing. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I do have a motion. I have a second. Is there any further discussion? I really appreciate the, the dialogue. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for thank your time, you. Commissioners. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, let's talk about Microsoft 365 and Exchange subscription. And a big ticket item. Is this the chaplain? Huh? You said Mark River was the deacon. Oh, I'm sorry. He's a deacon. <laughs> the deacon at St. Joe's. Yep. So do, do I have to call you deacon? No, sir. <laughs> Just don't call them late for lunch. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Good morning. The Office of Procurement, in cooperation with the Department of Technology Services, requests your approval to award the annual renewal of the Microsoft Office 365 and exchange subscriptions to SHI International in the amount of $248,704.76. This purchase is being made through the Maryland State Contract 001B06-00408. This is within the adopted fiscal year 24 budget. In October 2018, the county transitioned from a Microsoft email server and Microsoft Office 2010 to the cloud-based version Microsoft Office 365 and subscription service. This renewal provides all county employee users the most current version of Microsoft Office 365 software to protect against cybersecurity attacks and provide access to the most current features. Okay. And just to give you a perspective, it's about $20 per person per month is what it comes out to. And so this is basically just an ongoing cost, like it's not an annual? It's an annual subscription. It's an annual. Okay. It's an annual. We'll be back here next year again with yep. it. Okay. <laughs> and there's no value in doing it multiple years. It's an annual. No. Gotcha. There is no value. 
Motion to award the annual renewal of the Microsoft Office's 365 and exchange subscriptions to SHI International in the amount of $248,704.76. Second. A motion got a second. I do have a quick question, if I might, though. Um, Mr. Ripper, just out of curiosity, since this is an annual uh, expense, are we seeing significant increases on, on the pricing of this at this point, or has it been pretty? No, there has been, ha hasn't been for the last couple of years significant increase. Doesn't mean it can't happen in the sure. future, but at this point. Okay, I was just curious. Thank we're you. We're running, running about the $20 per person. Okay, thank you. Per month. Okay. Any other uh, discussion? Good question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Let's talk about Sella Land Management System Maintenance and Support Renewal. Go for it. The Office of Procurement, in cooperation with Technology Service, requests your approval to award the final year of a three-year contract for the Acela Land Management System Maintenance and Support Services to Acela in the amount of $112,171.64. This amount is within the adopted fiscal year 24 budget. Good morning, Commissioners. Charlie Beckhart with Technology Services. Good morning. The Excella software product is at the heart of our integrated land management system and is used by a large number of county agencies, dozens and dozens of employees and staff in those agencies, plus contractors, citizens, uh, via the web portal that we provide to uh, schedule inspections, to get permit information and so forth. And so uh, it's an invari a very important enterprise-wide software system. And I'll just emphasize again that your approval today would allow us to execute the third year of a three-year contract. Okay. And um, was this a one plus two or two plus one, or was it just a three-year contract? It's a three-year contract with uh, fixed prices built in. And so the year-over-year -year increase was 5%, mm -hmm. which was stable, predictable, mm -hmm. and reasonable, and that's why we entered into a three-year contract for this. Okay. Okay. Motion to award the third-year contract renewal of the Excella Annual Maintenance and Support Services to Excella in the amount of $112,171.64. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Is there a discussion on this one? Seeing here, none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you, you very commissioners. Much. All very Thank much. You. See you, Deacon. <laughs> <laughs> who, are the, who are the Deacons? Basketball. Duke. Pardon me? Duke, isn't it? Yeah. Deacons. Deacons? Yeah, they're Deacons. <laughs> Wake Forest. My niece is, huh? Is it Wake Forest? Demon Deacons? Demon, is that Duke or Wake Forest? Blue Devil? Somebody's the Blue Devils. Duke, Duke Blue Devils, Demon Deacons. Oh. Or was that Wake Forest, maybe? Maybe it is. Demon Wake Demon Forest. Forest. It is Wake Forest. Wake Forest. Who said that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I know, oh, it's all good. <laughs> it's basketball season, come on. Or at least it's getting there. Um, public comment. Public comments. Is there anybody on the phone for public comments? Chris? I have no one waiting on the line, sir. Okay, do what, we have. What is the plan for item one that we so skipped? We'll, we'll get to that in one sec. Um, well, go ahead. Yeah, we're, so. We're waiting on Jenny. Uh, so, bond sale. Uh, was uh, started at 1030 um, and because there is no refunding it should not be very long but they do not have all the numbers yet so uh, we will continue on with open admin and the agendas and um, if we get to the point where you're ready to finish for the day open session we'll just recess um, go on to okay. other things and then come back but when bond sales ready. Because it needs to happen today. Oh, it yeah. has to happen today yeah. and it has to happen within a certain number of yes. minutes from the, um, yeah, you have to award within a certain number, a time frame. Yeah. Commissioner Rothstein's not near as old as I am, but I was afraid he just forgot old. it. I wasn't <laughs> sure if we needed no. to remind you. Oh, no. <laughs> a little help from a friend never hurts. But, but you, are, friend. You, you are old. Anyway. Um, I do have a Okay, do we comment. have public comments? Mr. Camden Zahn. Zahn? Zahn. Zahn. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hey, good morning, guys. It's 
So I'm Camden Zahn. I work for Vallo Biomedia in Tawnytown, Maryland. Uh, Vallo is a chicken farm that actually produces specific pathogen-free eggs for vaccine manufacturing. We're looking to create a clean product and our electric usage because of this is much higher than commercial poultry facilities, mainly due to our increased ventilation requirements for providing our chickens with air-conditioned environment. We request that the no variance clause for ground mounted solar systems be changed for agricultural districts under 158.153 solar energy generating systems. The goal for Vallo is to reduce our carbon footprint and produce close to 100% of our annual kilowatt hour usage for our site. All power produced by the proposed system would be utilized only by Vallo and not redistributed back to vendors. Current Square footage limitations only allow us to offset 57.2% of our total annual usage. Thank you for your time and consideration, and I have a letter to leave with you guys as well. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, typically, we don't have any questions or dialogue, so let's leave it at this, and you feel free to provide us with a letter, okay? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You. Any other public comments? Rich, did you have public comment or no? Okay. Okay, Wanda, why don't you come on up? Uh, do we have anything for open admin? No, sir. Um, is he going to give you a lot? Is he? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. I want to make sure we get that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Interesting discussion. Okay, Wanda. Hello, Wanda. Oh, um, how are you? Did you, did you want to? What? Open admin, did you want to do a solution? I think we'll wait, wait for wait the. Wait till after. Okay. Yeah. Whichever. <laughs> I don't want you to. What? Never mind. Okay. Oh, she was asking about. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Um, <coughs> so next week, it is a hopping week. <laughs> so Monday, actually, I do have a town hall uh, down in the uh, South Carroll Senior Community Center, um, both at 10 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. On Tuesday at 2 p.m. is Veterans Advisory Meeting. Commissioners Gordon and Kyler will be attending. Wednesday, we have nothing scheduled. Thursday, we're going to fall asleep after eating turkey. Friday, the offices are closed. We're going to still be asleep. We'll still be asleep. Saturday, nothing scheduled. Uh, Sunday, Commissioner Vigliotti has the podcast as he wakes up after the turkey. After the turkey. Oh, just and okay. one other quick thing. Saturday is small business Saturday. So if you can get to any small business in the county, Absolutely. definitely do so. Appreciate that. On... Uh, Monday, November 27th, nothing scheduled. The 28th, there's a ribbon cutting at the bank, ACNB Bank uh, in Westminster. Are you attending? I um, probably will attend that one. Go ahead and add me to that if you could. Then a bro uh, Boys and Girls Club, uh, Big Chill in Westminster at 3 p.m. You can add me. Tyler you can add me as well. And Gordon will be attending. I'm where, where is that happening? Um, that'll actually be out back of the building. Yeah. Out back behind the Boys and Girls. Yes, yeah, so it'll be in the alleyway behind the building. They'll bring in the dunk tank. Just make sure you don't park to the left because that's private property and they get very angry if you park there. Yeah. So. Thank you. I just that heard. always used to be the case unless they changed it. Uh, no, I, no, you're yeah. correct. <laughs> um, Sorry. No, no, all good. So uh, Wednesday, November 29th, 6 p.m. is a virtual Planning and Zoning Commission. Commissioner Gordon will be uh, participating in that Thursday, November 30th. We have open session. And let's see. Public hearing on Babylon Road closure. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and then uh, state and local alcohol legislation will be discussed from uh, Mr. Benfer and the Board of the Liquor uh, Board, yeah, Board of License Commissioners. Board of so Liquor. Just as a, uh, they're, they're a basically yeah. a quasi state agency, um, but as a courtesy, before they take legislation to the delegation, they present it to you for your comment and review. So that will be what they were doing. And that was my question. This is a courtesy. This is yeah. not required. They wouldn't have to do it, but they traditionally do. Yes. And then we have an update from uh, DHR, from uh, Human Resources, from Ms. Bixler. Um, then we'll talk about a 
potential bid approval and contract award for health and welfare consulting services over Department of Human Resources. Or maybe she's like buttering us up for then having that contract <laughs> potential. Then uh, a grant for approval to submit application acceptance of award for the community coordinated support partnerships grants to hub pilots uh, from DCS from uh, Ms. Steckel and her team and then we go we will recess and then go into uh, reconvene into the Board of Health um, and then upon conclusion of that we will recess out of the Board of Health and reconvene uh, in back into open session and Talk about a contract award for Genesis Treatment Services, approval to purchase, remove, and replace condensers and air handler units, and talk about a contracting award for purchase of replacement dissolved air flotation. Is it possible to we move might things around those, yeah. and yeah, do the Board of Health like by itself? Yeah, that's not a thing. Okay, order. thank you. Um, Friday, December 1st, wow, Carroll County Realtors Legislation Legislative Luncheon. Currently, it's Commissioners Gordon, Kyler, and myself will be attending at Paradiso's at 11 a.m. It starts, and then at 9 a.m. is uh, Mission Barbecue brunch for VIPs. Um, here in Westminster, I may be attending that. Um, I gotta check my calendar. It's always fun to be at their brunch. Um, so you can put me down for that and tell Vivian. Um, and then Commissioner Kyler will provide his wisdom for the podcast on December 3rd. How'd I do, okay? Tim, do you have anything for the good of the group? No, I was just shocked you wavered on Mission Barbecue there for a second. That's very <laughs> characteristic. I had a good Mission Barbecue the other day. So <laughs> it was delicious. Roberta convinced me to uh, go there. So, okay. Roberta, do you have anything for the good of the group? Um, I think Commissioner Gordon might. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> we had talked about this um, a while back uh, regarding AgPres, and of course, obviously, our commitment by the board as a whole um, so we had talked about doing a uh, an up a resolution I won't say an updated but a resolution just qualifying that that we're looking at that goal of a hundred thousand acres now obviously if we bring in a property and let's say it's it adjusts the number to a hundred and two thousand we're not gonna you know quibble over that but just this would be something to solidify that resolution that we're looking at a hundred thousand goal formally which has never been done in a previous light Totally in favor of that. So in doing that, do we, uh, is it a resolution or is it a? Yes, it's a resolution. It, it's uh, okay. an expression yeah. of your. Commitment, I guess, and support. Commitment, support, but not a, not financial commitment. Correct. There's no uh, a <laughs> financial commitment made by the resolution. The question was raised at some point, where did the 100,000 acres come from? And this is just an, an attempt to for future generations, uh, at least memorialize it for this particular Board of County Commissioners. Okay. So Do we need to... Uh, I would make a motion and adopt it if you would like. So it sounds like you're making a motion. Make a motion that we accept the resolution regarding the 100,000 acre goal for AGPRES and S memorialize that. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Is there any discussion on this? I appreciate the work that was done. In preparing us for this, is there no discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. What else? Um, just the normal um, signing things, the letters from Valo. Um, there, the first thing is the um, ordinance that the board passed a week or two ago on the uh, drug treatment definitions and okay. things in here to sign. Um, the, I received a message from Jenny that they're about 15 or so minutes from being ready for bond sale. So if you want to recess and, um, and then come back in 15 or 20 minutes. And we need to do that in open. 
That has to be done. Okay, so why don't we, uh, I need a motion to recess until 12. So moved. Joe, if I could, one second. I just oh, want to sure. mention one thing. Um, we have uh, the Board of Health meeting coming up. Can we get an agenda in advance yeah. of that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A second. Oh, absolutely. Okay, I have a motion. I have a second to recess until 12 o'clock, and we will come back and listen and learn from what they have to say. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Okay, it is now good afternoon. It's 12.01. We're back in open session and we're going into item, whatever it may be. One. One, <laughs> the important item. And I'm gonna hand it over to Miss Jenny Hobbs and why don't you share with us who's with you at the table. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Commissioners, uh, with me is Miss Emily Fustig. She is with our bond council, McKenna Shelton Hen. And then we have Jen Dirksen and Joe Mason who are with Davenport, our financial advisors. So we are before you, now I can officially say this afternoon, um, to provide bid results and actions necessary to complete the county's annual bond sale. Uh, the, this morning at 10.30, we opened bond bids, which we'll go through them shortly. And, um, but first, we are pleased to reiterate that we did receive our triple, triple A from all the credit rating agencies. They were all reaffirmed, um, and that is has such a positive impact on our bond uh, rating interests. So we did advertise and we actually had received 17 bids in. Wow. Yes, it's probably one of the highest that we've ever had. Um, the winning bid was, proud to say, 3.63%, which actually was lower than last year's. Uh, which came in at 3.79. So it was unexpected. I guess the markets are moving the other way, uh, which is a good thing for us. So the $30 million of general obligation bonds um, are scheduled to be issued with the proceeds funding general government projects, um, Board of Education projects, and then also some stormwater in our conservation programs. So uh, with that, I will let I group up here speak on that. Yes, good afternoon, commissioners. Oh. Uh, good to see you all again. Good afternoon. Uh, so what is before you is the resolution mm -hmm. uh, that follows the legislation that you all approved previously, um, which has the as the exhibits the results of the sale. I, uh, exhibit A shows you the list of all of the bidders we had. As um, Jenny mentioned, there was a large number, one of the most I've seen in a while, so congratulations. Um, and then the winning bidder and the interest rates and principal amounts. Because there was premium received here, where your actual par amount, while you're gonna receive you know, over $30 million, your par amount of your bonds is gonna be a smaller amount. It's 27,950, so that's great. Um, that we pay back. So that is on the, on the last page when you have these principal amounts on Exhibit C, they're not going to total to exactly $30 because you're only going to have to pay back that lesser amount because you got the premium. Um, and so before you is just those results, and this just says that this is within that $30 million limit that was approved previously at the public hearing. Okay. And then I'm sure uh, Davenport team will give you some and results Joe. as well. Uh, Ms. Hobbs uh, outlined today, but uh, your result was really, really good. Uh, 17 bidders, you had 10 last year. So up from last year, uh, as Ms. Hobbs mentioned, the rate is up from last year as well. Um, you really tie ended up timing the market well because uh, interest rates have come down over the last few weeks and even this week due to the inflation numbers coming in under what we anticipated. So a very successful sale. So congratulations. I don't know. Joe. What, um, and I'm sorry. Uh, I think uh, more than one of you said it. What was last year's rate? 3.79. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. No problem. Um, the 17 bids is, is a wonderful result. Um, I think the $30 million par amount was really a nice sweet spot in this market. Um, large enough that the major international money center banks like JP Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, they were all on the list of bidders that submitted uh, proposals, um, but also um, not of so much size that regional firms um, couldn't, uh, couldn't come in and, and mm -hmm. place their own bid. So you, you got a good broad cross section of the market. Um, I would note that UBS, well, a very large financial services firm, uh, had the lowest TIC. The next five firms on the bid list, in order of their 
uh, true interest cost proposals were all regional firms, um, Janney, Mesereau, Truist, Fifth Third, and Robert Baird. So um, you got uh, you got the Goldilocks Paramount for <laughs> for this sale. So um, you know every market environment's a little bit different, but it certainly worked in your favor uh, very nicely today. So congratulations. Um, we're proud to serve Carroll County, and we're excited with with the uh, the results. The bid results are all public information, correct? Yes. Yes, these, these bonds were sold at competitive bid, which means at 1030 we conducted an auction. Any and all qualified bidders can submit proposals, and um, today you were fortunate to get. He had 17 bidders signed up, and all 17 submitted a bid, which is rare. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. We need to say thank you to you guys, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't need to. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's no, there's no obligatory. We need, but, um, but it, it is always a kind gesture. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, absolutely, the the tutelage, the mentorship, uh, navigating us through the process, um, you know, is, you know, may not get us everywhere we want to go. It's, it is incumbent on us, Carroll County, to you know, put our best foot forward and to receive the, the ratings. But I do believe it's teamwork and we could not have done it without those three toolage mentorship and navigation uh, through the process. Um, so truly appreciate it. Um, uh, definitely appreciate the, uh, as I would say, hot washes or after actions, <clears throat> after, you know, meeting with S&P Fitch and Moody's, um, as we continue to refine uh, <clears throat> how we were sharing information, um, you know, messaging is always important. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of our team, uh, both internally and very proud of our team externally because you, you know, you, you've done uh, really yeoman's work in getting us to where we are. Um, so uh, thank you. Um, and you made a good yeah. point because well, thank, you. thank you, but there's a lot of other people that had their hands in this and yeah. thank them also. Yeah. Yep. And I just appreciate Hobbs you and her team. a good point. Yeah, you <laughs> just, just saying. It's late. <laughs> so, and you commissioners did a fine, very fine job um, acquitting yourselves in front of the rating agencies. They, uh, your message was very well received both from the staff side and from uh, from your side of the, yep. the dais. So well done all the way around. So well, thank you. We we shared with the other ones that it, after each one you do a critique and one time in two days you actually complimented us. <laughs> <laughs> Hard won victory. <laughs> okay, so do I have a uh, motion? Motion to approve resolution number 1205-2023. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Right. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank now you what's Thank the you next all. step? Thank you very Congratulations. much. Congratulations. Now, can you guys like relax or not yet? <laughs> not quite. <laughs> um, I will be back here to meet with uh, different officials from the county in another probably week and a half to sign all of the closing documents, and then right. you'll get your money um, closing on November 30th. Which is a big stack of documents. Yes, I know you're used to that. <laughs> big, big stack of stuff. Um, I don't. I just. I don't recall if we mentioned it or not. You've made an award, but it is per the resolution that. Um, was drawn up and, and that you just passed. Uh, it is subject to receipt of a good faith deposit, typically 1% of the par amount. Um, that's just to hold their feet to the fire to make sure that they show up at closing and, and pay for the bonds. Um, not atypical, that hasn't been received yet. It's in process at the bank and uh, we expect it uh, forthwith, but just wanted to make you aware that it was subject to receiving that. So we'll be waiting on that. And to Thank clarify, so Exhibit C, I mean, it, it's almost like, in lack, lack of a better term, that's the APR, the 5%. Is that the way that works out with, that's the actual interest rate? Yes. Okay. Um, so because you received premium on the mm -hmm. bonds, uh, the total interest costs, the, the 3 point, uh, six. Six, six three is what ultimately you are paying since you're not paying back the full amount the that you received. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
Uh, this is great news. Really, the three point six. Reverse from what you would typically yeah. expect, like an APR. That's it's it's, it's almost the opposite of that. Yes. In, yeah, in it's some like ways. when you yeah. points to pay down a more. It's yeah. like the opposite. Yeah. You're, they're yeah. paying you more up front. Um, okay. yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Good seeing you guys. Okay. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mike. Aye. <laughs>